welcome to another exciting broadcast day. Mm-hmm. That's right. Oh, too much show for one morning. This really is some show today. Yeah, it's packed. We're loaded for bear. Claudia DeFalco is in studio. Good morning. Good to see you again, sweetie P. Thank you. I'm She's a little more awake this morning. Good. You're acclimated. <laughs> she uh, is filling in for Rachel Perry and did such a wonderful job yesterday. And Rachel didn't come back and we couldn't find anyone to take her place. We, th- that we asked her back. <laughs> didn't say that out loud, did I? No, she did such a great job yesterday that we asked her back today. Still to foxy, even with the ball cap. Everybody in the in the room here has a ball cap well, on. Well, you know, Dave. Adam complained right. about Roots yesterday. Mm. So I didn't want yeah. him to... Not your, not your roots, hours. not your roots. <laughs> <clears throat> I agree. It's a uh, we're. I was complaining about the chicks with the blonde hair who have the black roots. I agree. It's creepy when the blonde is just as blonde going into the doll head as it is coming out of a doll head. Maybe that's the problem. It reminds you of a doll because that's what. That's why. That's the creepy thing about dolls. Not them sleeping with their eyes open. And not uh, Telly Savalas <laughs> doing battle with them on the Twilight Zone. It's the fact that the root is the exact same color as the tip, and it's weird. You don't even. It's off putting. And when you see the blonde porn star that has it done that way, then they give that sort of weird vacuous. Yeah. She's the Walking Dead. She's an animated doll kind of look. So you want a little color. But not black going into blonde. You want a sort of a dirty blonde going into blonde or a dark, you know, light brown. You know, sometimes you see it looks like a skunk stripe going mm-hmm. black, racing stripe going down the chick's heads. I don't go for that. Seems so. But you must be happy. The upshot is, Ace, is that you gave her a note. I don't care for that sort of thing. She took it to heart. Now mm-hmm. she's wearing a ball cap. <laughs> yeah. Here's my next note. She wishes to please you. My next note is, uh, man, is it hot in here? Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. You know, I'm seeing my stylist tomorrow. <laughs> You're seeing a stylist yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, you want to come too. along and explain to him what we want with my hair? I'd like that we may have the same one. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a, is it the guy who picks out my sweatpants for the radio? Well, we'll talk to we'll, we'll talk to uh, we'll talk about the surge of Van Nuys later. You know, you've arrived when you have a of in front of your <laughs> yeah. name. All right, in front of the city you come from. All right, where were we? Yes. So David Spade this time. I'm not kidding. He's going to be on the show. Republican Richard Martin and Ozzie are going to uh, square off in a heated debate over uh, this uh, latest uh, immigration bill. Also, uh, Brett Michaels from Poison is coming in. Tad is beside himself. I hope Brett's not listening, but I'll tell you something. about. I'm not a huge Poison fan. I, I dig the 80s hair stuff. Now, I didn't dig it then. Now that I look back at it, I sort of look at it like an American car from the 70s, a mm-hmm. Chrysler, Cordova, or Pacer or something. I sort of see one now. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's cute. I Nostalgic. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of fun, yeah. I would have been miserable to be behind the wheel of one in 1977, but now that I look at it, <laughs> okay, all right. It's, you know, VH1 does the thing with the smoke pods and the hair and stuff. And you're like, ah, all right. That was, a, that was before AIDS, at least. <laughs> Got that to think about. But I realize Tad has this way, and there's certain people that can do this. He has a uncanny way of um, tapping into everything I don't care for and loving it. And I now realize, you know how they say you have your muse that's sent down? He's what my lard. He's my, <laughs> I don't know, whatever the opposite of your muse is. You know the guy has to hang around just to piss you off? You know, when you go, oh, what's the deal with NASCAR? A bunch of guys driving American cars going in a circle. For, I love NASCAR. <laughs> you, know, you know that guy who has to say he loves that if there's a type, if you don't like country music, he loves country music. If you don't like NASCAR, if there's a team you don't like, he loves it. What, if there's a chick you don't think is hot, he thinks she's smoking. That's Tad. Do you realize that that's Tad? Yes. That almost everything you announce, oh, look, who cares? Or I'm not interested in that. Or what's the deal? Well, America going crazy with American Idol and NASCAR. I don't understand. He's all over every second of it every drop of it it's interesting as a matter of fact he is that in the low point bro- yeah, yeah. In, in the low brow way he he fulfills that mm. and i do the highbrow stuff you bad mouth poetry right and i say <laughs> i like it things that's like that's right this. that's right you you quote ee e. cummings to me Ooh, yates jillian barbary's uh, on the phone uh, oh. speaking of hot chicks and i and i and i have to say this she has nice hair she does yeah and she doesn't have that roots thing but she she's not blonde uh we uh, have the uh, FHM Top 100 Sexiest Women, by the way, and I always have problems with this list, and um, 
As a matter of fact, that's that's the nature of me. If you put a list in front of me, it angers me. What is this? My wife hands me a list. Up, eggs at the top. Eggs <laughs> in front of uh, in, in front of skim milk. Should Give me a break, Cheetos. sweetie. And I just crumpled up and toss it back at her. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me when you get some uh, uh, mango chutney and provolone on this list. Until then, <laughs> we're, we won't be speaking. Jillian. Hey guys, hi Adam. What's happening, Jillian Barbary? Um, well, life, I picked myself up off the ground. I'm not on the list this year. I, I, it was very hard for me. Yeah, I must say, too, with these lists, is why bother composing a list when you have, you know, I don't know. Charlize Theron is below, mm, who do we have? Paris Hilton. Oh, please. You know what I mean? Yeah, Charlize Theron, one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen, is uh, four notches below Paris Hilton. And, you know, Mariah Carey is 60 places in front of Elizabeth Elizabeth Hurley. I think Giselle Bündchen is in the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> Petra Nimkova, the one who survived the tsunami, mm-hmm. who's just... Oh, Gorgeous. Uh, I mean, no, nobody better looking than her. Paris Hilton is 70 in Petra front of her. Nimkova is... Phenomenal. Jillian, you know what this means? You're off the charts. Yes, maybe. Oh, I, remember, yes. I remember the first year I made it, I was like number 100. I like made it in by the sk- I, I was number 100. And then the next year I was 87. And I had just met my birth family. And, you know, they're all up in Toronto. And and they're so unimpressed by lists. So, like, number 100, they're like, well, damn, you could do better. 100. Well, what do you guys think of number impressed. one? I would argue, uh, let's see, Scarlett Johansson. Don't care for it. I didn't like her Vanity Fair cover at all. No, here's I the... didn't like that cover. I didn't, I didn't you know, like I it. In Matt's point, she's really amazing looking. But, but here's... In point, anyway. Here's the thing. I, I, I don't think anyone would ever argue that Scarlett Johansson is cute and attractive and has nice skin and things like that. But as long as you're under 5'5 five five or 5'6 five and you're a little bit thick around the lower half or a little bit cankly, you know, she's not... She's by, by no means heavy set or anything, but we mistake sort of cute with with statuesque. You know, there are there are women who are cut a certain way. And when you see them in person, you know, they're six foot tall and they're narrow at the waist and they have the beautiful curves and the bosom and that whole thing. We fill in a lot of cute chicks and say they're in the same par with these women. They're not. A lot of girls that, uh, to me, Carmen Electra is one of the most beautiful women I've ever seen in my life. And she's tiny. She's 5'5", five, 5'5", five, 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 real petite but shapely. Uh, Halle Berry the same way. I, I, don't, I think the tall, super tall girls like the Charlize Theron, the Giselles, are, the, are not the norm, you know? Yeah. Well, I can, but, I can say there's a few, like, like there's stuff like this, like Danica Patrick. And, yeah, that's the one I I've met, And I've, Heidi Klum right next to her. I've met Danica Patrick yeah. a few times. She's attractive for somebody who does something. Right. They, none, none of these other chicks really do anything unless you want to count acting. But Danica Patrick <laughs> drives a race car, so it's a big deal that she's not either a lesbian or a pig. She's petite and her skin's nice. There's nothing wrong with her. But if she was in your high school and she asked you out to the prom, you'd scratch your chin for a few minutes exactly. before he Jay said Johnstone, yes. <laughs> Jay Johnstone, the old ball player, was the clown prince of baseball. Yeah, he was funny for a baseball player. He wasn't funny. <laughs> right. Same thing. Danica, Danica Patrick <laughs> is funny for someone who has a job. I mean, <laughs> good looking for someone who has a so job. Thank who, you. Who decides on this list? Is it the readers? Is it I think you it's, guys? I think it's the publicist. The publicist, yeah. exactly. No, because I didn't have a publicist when I was in both times. So oh, I well, well, you're that hot. Oh, please. But I don't think it's a publicist. It has nothing to do with that. I think it's the um, people. I did every time a couple times, so then they would... They would put it out to the readers on a poll, I think, on the Internet, and then they would decide from that, and then they would just decide from the general, whoever was popular at that time, right? like Scarlett Johansson right now, because I don't think she's yeah. ever been an FHM. Right. So they just do a huge readers poll, and, and they do it on the Internet, and they do it through... So that's how that all happens, because a lot of people well. publishers don't want them to be in it, because they think it's a highbrow. They're it, like, oh, crap, she's in this list, and well. we don't want her. We want her to take a more... You if know, this is, in fact, uh, a sampling of the readers of F- FHM and who, in fact, are citizens of this fine country, I'm moving to Canada, because Jessica Simpson coming in at number four, and then, like, Elizabeth Hurley, 75. It makes, well, well, Jessica Simpson is so gorgeous. Elizabeth yeah. Hurley, maybe because, I don't no, know. No, she's I, not that hot. No. Here, I, 
Yes. I called in because I'm stuck up behind four cars, four car pileup on the 405. Really? He's going south down on the 405. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We're getting a traffic report. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slow and go, <laughs> traffic in lanes. Some... Oh, major. We've got two fire trucks and an ambulance, and I'm just getting past. Now, wh- what time are you supposed to be in at Fox? I don't, they don't really care what time I get in. As long as I'm on the air at 645, they don't. I can get oh. in at 640. It's not a matter of that. You just have to be ready to go on the air. Really? Well, uh, baby, uh, you wait. So. Today I'm wearing sweatpants. I really don't care. I'm putting a pool in my house. I was out to, outside yesterday in the dirt doing all that stuff. So I'm just, I'm very low key today. You're, out, you're actually physically digging the pool yourself, That's Jillian. Not crazy, but I have I, I have people that are digging it, and I love it. I love it. I'm so excited. Six what? years in the valley, 110 degrees. My first year with the pool. I cannot wait. Yeah. Well, listen. Every month is uh, bikini season for you, baby doll. I don't know what you oh, waited so long for. I got an idea. Hmm. Maybe yeah. Tad could be her pool boy this summer. Tad comes over. Yes. Yes. Tad with a skimmer and a pair of Nikes. It's not a problem. <laughs> Whatever happened to the uh, porn star pool man? Mm. I don't know, but I'd like to get a hot pool boy. Yeah. My, my <laughs> girlfriends want to come over. They're all like me in their 30s, divorced. Those girls like, make good money. One's a doctor. I said, we'll just lounge around and we'll hire a man whore to cater to us. All right. In every way. Well, we'll send, uh, we'll send Big Tad over there. And right. uh, <laughs> look, he's got enough uh, stretch mark to circle the globe. Nice. But. He does a cannonball and that pool's done, right? Empties out. I got to say, yes. It's part of a service he actually, they use him in, uh, the park services use him when <laughs> winter comes around and the public <laughs> pools need to be trained. If we could we could spend thousands renting bilge pumps or Big Tad could just do one can opener and it would be done. <laughs> but then having but then having the giant crane come over to lift him out of the pool is <laughs> Yeah, but that's a one-time fr- thing yeah, and they do they do per week rental so they can hit oh. the whole south line. Hey, can I can I yes. change subjects quickly for Dave? Dave Damashek, I thought, you know, I've listened to radio forever and I've been on the other side of when people attack you, especially, you know, the Frosties and the Frank, not necessarily the Heidi's, mm-hmm. um, and uh, the other girl, 98.7, whom I met once and was a total biatch and still talks to that, about me to this day. It was six years ago. I won't mm-hmm. even say her name. She's such a nightmare. So I thought, Dave, you know, you handle yourself really well because you are really funny, and it's great to be attacked because it means they want to be you. I don't think that you have to be negative to be funny. And That's right. So here, here. I thought, Dave, you handled yourself so well because, you know, they need something to talk about, and they kind of, local people get bitter after a while. I've seen it in local news and local radio they get pissed off and angry and jealous and it's just sort of par for the course so if you you know tread above it which you did you don't get dra- dragged down into the mire of their crap yes. well that's what i said yeah, listen yeah. i don't yeah. like i don't want to waste the time the valuable time of a, of a, a nationally syndicated morning show you know to address this but like i said look i've been doing it for three months look where i am he's been doing it for 10 years this uh frosty and the snowman show whatever is uh you know look, he's on a, uh, this midday show with the cackling transvestite i'm i'm sitting next to one of the funniest guys on the globe you know thank you what should i do Brushka. i should put him down then All should right. i go to the special olympics and and harris the the athletes please i, I i'm right. above it All thank right. you jillian nice job. you're right i take the high road Take it easy. All right. Thank Being you. Easy, Tiger. Jillian Barbary, everyone. Thank you, baby doll. Great job. All right, guys. Take care. It's Talk always. to you I'm soon. <laughs> <laughs> the woman has a motor. She's dynamite. Yeah. I'm a big fan now. Yeah. I well. agree with everything she said. <laughs> And I agree when you're being uh, attacked, it is, uh, it's an acknowledgement that you have arrived in a form of flattery, mm-hmm. unless it's by a bear. In which case, it's He's just hungry. an attack. Do not try to read between the lines when a bear is attacking you. That's not a, it's not a compliment. This is not some psychological mumbo jumbo. You're physically being attacked. <laughs> now back yes. to this FHM thing. Yes, Electra. First, of, I like I like this Electra. I would take her over Theron if given the choice. Wow, which I may soon wow. be given. Me too. Wow. You would. Wow, yeah, I would. Oh. Yeah, let me say this. I, I know uh, Carmen Electra. She's a delight. She's a sweet and, and beautiful. But I got to say, there's an element, and maybe it's just the boob job. Now, I'm a boob man, don't get me wrong, but maybe there's a little element of a little bit of porn star to her. Little bit. Little dusting. You're of saying porn that star. like it's a bad thing. Yeah. I, 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 I'll tell you what. I'm a fan of hers, and this is, again, the choice between going with the... Uh, you know the uh, top sirloin or the the t-bone you know it's all great it's all going to be delicious i think i go through on just just because you got a little girl next door to her maybe a little classic beauty mm-hmm. not, not not quite the little porn star all right maybe we can agree on this 
Hmm. Number 13, Eva Longoria. Yeah. Please, let's drop her already. I, she's an attractive <laughs> woman who looks like she's by, looks like an attractive 41-year-old woman to me. Yes. Here's, here's the thing. Just because there's nothing wrong with you doesn't make you hot. Just because That's exactly right. Just because you're not fat and you don't have a big nose or you don't have bad skin does not mean uh, through through math through math you're hot. Eva Longoria, I I don't understand. I, I just like look, she's cute, she's attractive. I could see her being one of the cute wives of one of my guys when I used to work in construction. You know what I mean? Like if I went over to uh, Kurt's house for dinner and uh, Eva Longoria, m- minus minus the you know hairstylist and the Pilates coach, just a base model Eva Longoria. And keep in mind, these people are are, are running it all. I mean, they're exactly. firing on all they're cylinders. They're looking as good as they could possibly look. Yes, Eva, Eva Longoria is getting $600 haircuts and going to the spray salon place and getting the tan put on and having the, you know, we only see them on the red carpet. But if Two the, hours of Pilates yes, every day. The right. civilian version of Eva Longoria answered the door at my construction buddy's house, I'd go, well, she ain't fat. I guess Tur- <laughs> Kurt did okay for himself. Maybe he's got a few ducats I don't know about. Yes, but if Charlize Theron answer the door be like what the f right what's going on Here's or another one. elizabeth hurley or petra right. Nimkova, or even you know Catherine zeta jones it'd be like oh, oh, oh yeah oh. yeah what about mandy one. moore i i don't get that cute. either. she's cute but yeah again it's like one of those nothing wrong with her nice skin misha seems, barton she seems pouts. nice and misha nah. barton is she one pouts. of those yeah misha barton is eh, she's tall and there's nothing wrong with her. that's one i don't get how about just above her mariah carey at number 28 really yeah, is that a try? I, am I am I in the minority on this? Because I always see her held up. I don't get no. that one at I, all. I just no. think with Mariah, she has incredible star power. Like she, has, she walks in a room, shouldn't be you know factored she's into a hot list. Yes, she has a nice rack, Bobby. and uh, that's about it. I can tell you the other one that gets a little too much ink, and I, maybe I'm just tainted because she actually tried to pick up on me. <laughs> is uh, Fergie from the Black Eyed Peas? You're you're not impressed. Not impressed because she. And, and and Dave, please, please, uh, please back me up here. I wouldn't say somebody was overtly hitting on me if they weren't overtly hitting on me. I, as a matter of fact, I know those fellas, and you're not one of them. Don't right. know it. Yeah, right. A lot I of mean, people like to claim. I think she, I think she was sweet on me. Right. You she, know? yeah. She asked you to pass uh, a packet of of sugar across the table over the. Yeah, but it's the way she did it. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. You know, I know. For instance, Claudia was hitting on me yesterday. When it's overt, mm-hmm. you can't ignore it. I can't Undeniable. help it. Fergie used to be in a band called Wild Orchid. Orchid, right. I and, and, her. and they used to come on Loveline all the time. Mm-hmm. Loveline, the uh, TV show, I believe. This Maybe the radio show. This is I think. This is, uh, this is pre-8s. This is, uh, no, this is eh, 99. 99? Mm-hmm. When when, nah, when she let's was go, in Wild let's Orchid? go ninety eight yeah when she was in Wild Orchid yeah well I'd maybe say... she was in Wild Orchid I mean she could have gotten Wild Orchid when she was thirteen or something for I, all I, I think know she was on Kids Incorporated at that age <laughs> who the hell knew I was going to get busted on this Fergie stuff <laughs> <laughs> you got like a, a Fergie bibliography in front of you Adam <laughs> Claudia is Fergie. <laughs> Yeah, she came on Loveline in, uh, uh, I think it was March 99. Well, that's funny because you guys wrapped your fourth season in February 99. So how could she? Have? <laughs> I believe it was the 28th. <laughs> but not for- She's a mole. Yeah. Point is, is, yeah, we'll find out. I think her Wild Orchid days probably ended. Well, she came on Loveline twice. I don't know when that was. Could have been 98. Could have been 97. But it could have been 99. We'll figure it out. Point is, is. I ran into her at a party later on, a couple days later, some some swanky uh, Hollywood type party. I was with my uh, girlfriend and now wife, and Fergie got a little bit loaded, and I guess she had a good time on the show. And by the way, she's only in Wild Orchid at this mm-hmm. point, some girl band that nobody's heard of, and I'm the host of the cool show she was on a couple times a few months back, and she just she just starts hitting on me. She's a little bit drunk to the point where my my wife actually said something to her, told her to back off or something. My oh, normally awesome. demure wife actually had to get in her Fantastic. grill a little bit. And that and turned was, you on. Was getting angry. Yeah, it was one of those things where she wanted to uh, give me a tour of the house or something right in front of my wife and, and my, 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 you know, like, stay here, we're going upstairs kind of thing. And my wife got PO'd. I think she 
I think she may have ingested or imbibed something and uh, got a little have, out of her that mind. That must have been the most awkward three-way ever. Yes, it was. It was great. <laughs> and here's all I'm saying: anybody that ever hit on me. Uh, should not be on this list. I mean, myself, I, my self esteem is low, but I'm also realistic. If if you hit on Adam Carolla, if you even spoke to Adam Carolla, your name does not belong anywhere on this list. And if this list went to ten thousand, your name should not be on it. That's all I'm saying. All right, we need to take ourselves a little break. We should talk more wife, about this tomorrow. But your, your wife does belong on the list, though, right? Adam, say yes. 101. She doesn't get up until 9. <laughs> say whatever I want. Okay. All right. Republican uh, Richard Martin coming in here. Going to do some battle with uh, Ozzy over the whole immigration thing. Tad's got a uh, Biggest Loser update for us. We have uh, David Spade, Brett Michaels. We're having an Adam off. I know that sounds gay, but uh, we have some guys who do... Uh, Top-notch Adam Carolla impersonations. We're going to bring them on and awesome. uh, have them uh, do me. It'll be humiliating. Jim Gaffigan, uh, yeah. comedian. Oh, so much coming up all after this. You're listening to The Adam Carolla Show. Call Adam now at 866-901-ADAM. Mm-hmm. Plenty of show today. David Spade, Brett Michaels. We're having a uh, impersonation competition for yours truly. Also, uh, Jim Gaffigan's coming in, comedian. We're going to start with Republican Richard Martin from Ohio. Good to have you back on the show. Always a pleasure, Adam. I appreciate you you having me on. Thank why do we do this? This guy is a jerk. I'll uh, tell you, I'll tell you why. I, I'm sorry. I know you, you're perfectly capable of defending yourself, thank you. but I feel like I need to defend the show because we're all fairly liberal. We're called. We're here in a blue state, and I feel like. It's irresponsible of us not to include other opinions and other points of view when it comes to doing our program. Plus, it gives us, if, if we all just sit here and uh, start uh, patting ourselves on the back, it turns into a uh, 69. God bless you, Which Adam. It's not a sexual thing. <laughs> sure. It's 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 a. Uh, if we'll look it up in the Bible, look under sixty nine, yeah. and you'll see what I'm. Um, look, mm. look, All right, look your under, show. Do what yeah, you want. look under that. I don't need. I don't need a bunch of uh, me agreeing with you and you agreeing with Claudia and Brusca agreeing with me. I think we bring somebody in. We mix it up. Do what you want. And that's why we bring in the uh, great uh, Republican from Ohio, Richard Martin. Thank you. So we'll get to the uh, whole uh, immigration bill and uh, guest worker visa and all that kind of stuff. Oswaldo was at the rally on Saturday, so we'll, he'll, uh, he'll talk about that. But first, uh, we'll just get into some politics because we haven't spoken to you for a little while. That sounds terrific. First off, uh, Andrew uh, Andrew Card is uh, leaving as chief of staff over there at the White House. He's the guy who wish, whispered into Bush's ear we're under attack when he was you know on nine eleven. Actually, yeah. actually, he did. That's not what he whispered. Oh, he didn't. No, I thought that's what no, he said. No, he said uh, he, he leaned over and he said uh, he said W, uh, you know, don't don't get up, uh, don't look alarmed, mm -hmm. but the brush at the ranch is piling up. Oh, really? The horse yes. brush? Yeah. And and then he said, uh, and uh, by the way, we just got an in for a rock. Wow. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. you're saying using it as an excuse. No. Well, however you want to interpret well, the fact that. that yeah. I mean, you must really have some insiders over there at the White House to be privy to that kind uh, of information. Well, you know, I, uh, I talked to some folks, Adam. I talked to some neat folks. What about the uh, South Dakota abortion law where abortion is outlawed even in cases of incest and rape? Terrific. Yeah. Terrific. They use incest and rape, rape like they're bad things, by the way. Yeah. Well, you got to understand. Uh, Dave yeah, wrote Adam, that joke and slid it across the console. It was not me. It was Shelly the cue Shelley, card the girl. Shelly the cue card girl. You know, Shelly, hold on. Inappropriate. That was inappropriate. Yeah, why don't you sit yourself down and think about what you just wrote? Yes. You know, there's nothing uh, There's nothing funny about uh, about rape. So, uh, Although I did hear this rape joke. That's just no. real. <laughs> no, I, this, I think we should just stick uh, yeah, to the topic no? here. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, it, it, well, in the, uh, first, let me address uh, an abortion in the case of uh, of incest. Uh, you know, folks say, uh, you know, why should that gal have to bring that baby to term? You know, mm -hmm. with her incest baby. Right. Uh, let's look at it this way: that kid's got a mom and a dad and a dad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's just a real neat situation. Interesting. So you're saying a lot yeah. of kids grow up without fathers, single Here's parent, one. or Here. even you know, at best, double parent. We got a triple parent here. 
Yeah, here's one with two dads. Two dads and maybe a grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. A lot of connections. Right. A lot of connections. And in the case of rape, uh, you know, again, there's nothing... There's nothing funny about that, but God darn it, if that gal didn't want to bring that baby to term, she shouldn't have walked out of the house dressed that way. <laughs> well, we don't know. She could have been raped in her house. You know, we don't know. That's she true. She walked out of the house dressed then a certain way. that's probably a case of incest. I well, see. Yeah. I see. So if it's inside the house, it's 97% incest. of cases of rape in the house are, uh, are incest. incestual, yeah. Interesting. I yeah. I never read that. Yeah. Well, there's a uh, actually a casino, I, you know, on an Indian reservation, this is true, in South Dakota, that is thinking of adding an abortion clinic in the casino. That's true on the reservation. Really? Yeah. We got the ads. We grabbed the ad off of the local TV. <laughs> why? Why we ever gave those people our land is beyond me. I don't think you're gonna like this. Beyond me. You got to know when to hold up. Know when to fold up. Hey, friends. The gambler Kenny Rogers here. You didn't know when to hold him, and now it's time to fold him. Listen to the gambler and get on over to Cherokee Casino and Planned Parenthood facility. If you love loose slots, or have you been known to have a loose slot yourself, head on over to Cherokee, <laughs> smack dab in the middle of South Dakota Sioux Nation. Or for you baby daddies who didn't know when to walk away or when to run, free buffet on Tuesdays, featuring our world famous scrambled eggs. Mmm, -mm, Cherokee. Tell him the gambler sent you. <laughs> wow. Got to get out there. That's just offensive. That is just I, offensive. I think it crosses a line of bad taste myself, actually. I think it's offensive for other reasons. And, and why is this gal on my left? I don't know who she is with the baseball cap, but why are you silent? It's Claudia. <laughs> You're doing all the Claudia. talking. Well, uh, Claudia, first of all... Uh, Your did, voice changed all of a sudden. What? You're not gay anymore. What? Whoa. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> what? Okay. First of all, you know, why don't you ditch the hat? Put your hair up in a nice bun mm -hmm. and have some respect for radio. <laughs> <laughs> You'd like to see her wearing a nice skirt or something. Nice, you don't like ladies in pants. A nice ankle length skirt. Why you have to march around here like you're in the army with your with your green pantaloons on? Yeah. I don't I don't understand it. You know, it, it, the, the gals these days, you know, there's there's a, a a looseness and a promiscuity, a lot of question asking. Well, you know, that's yeah. <laughs> ever, if you notice, Adam, ever since they got the right to vote, there's just been a whole lot of pushy. Are they whole, voting now? They are. They wow. are. Theoretically. They gotta look into that. Theoretically. And, uh, you know, next thing you know, the streets are jammed. They got a picket sign and another lady on their breath. <laughs> yeah. She suggested also that you might be gay. Uh, you know, uh, she can she can say whatever she wants, but there's one person I lay down with, and that's Jesus Christ. Wow. <laughs> He's no dude. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I, I think, he, I think yeah. he knew what I meant. Yes. All right. Republican from Ohio, Richard Martin, is in. Oswaldo from um, Nicaragua is in. Ozzy is, uh, came to this country how many years ago, Oswaldo? <laughs> Please tell me it wasn't over 20. 20 years. 20 years. Yeah. Still can't pronounce my name. Um, That's, that was not even <laughs> close. That was not even close to Adam. Uh, Known the man for 16 of his 20 years in this country, and he sounds exactly the same as the first day he, he uttered the word, ow. <laughs> Ozzy is uh, here from Nicaragua. You're here, you're here on political asylum, yes? Yeah, I come in for, uh, I have a lot of problems in my country. Mm -hmm. I come in for political asylum, not for economic problem. Uh-huh. Is it, who was going after you? The Sandinistas for not being able to pronounce Sandinista? Uh, at, at the time, you know, Somoza, Somoza in the power, you know, in my country. Mm -hmm. it's, it's down, you know, the Sandinistas take the power. Mm -hmm. And the Sandinistas make it, you know, the communists to my country. Yeah. The second day, you know, the, the, during the revolution. The communists, the yeah. revolution. Yep. Yeah. All right, so you came over here. Yep, I come here. Now, you have your green card now? You're yeah. legal? Yeah, I have my paper. You have your papers. Yeah. All right. When did you get that? It was recently, uh, right? Yeah, I think, you know, the, my, uh, my approval, uh, political asylum in 1999. All right. And where you were Saturday? You were down at the rally? I go to the march, you know, for uh, help her to for make it, you know, consistent to the, the more number, you know, more. Yeah. More volume to, yeah, they don't know where you're from, right? Yeah, you know, um, I help her to my friend. You know, I have a lot of friends. I have a, the same this, this same problem I have before. From Mexico? You know? 
Mexico, Salvador, Guatemala. Sweden. They all have a problem pronouncing Adam? <laughs> I would guess. That's probably the one you thing know? they agree on over there. Adam. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, I don't know. Now, now uh, Republican Martin, I don't know how uh, where you come down on this, although I can Take I a can wild guess. guess yeah, I'm going to take a guess. I'll tell you where I come down on it. I feel like this is uh, a melting pot. And I know it's a cliche. I don't like where this is going. Well, just uh, but you may. You may, because I have a radical plan myself. Okay. The melting pot, the thing that's great about this country is a sort of, it could be, uh, it's it's analogous to the food. You, one night you want to eat Mexican, and the next night you want to eat Thai food, and then it's off to some Japanese, and then you want to go to a smorgasbord. That's the beauty of it. If you just if we just had nothing but Thai food, as great as Thai food may be, at the end of the week you'd be tired of Thai food. And it's that way with burgers, and it'd be that way with pizza. That's that's what makes this country great. Really, that's the difference. As long as it's all being made by white teenagers. Well, all I'm saying, all I'm saying is, is as far as uh, uh, my, our uh, Mexican brothers go, great people. Nobody's worked with more Mexicans than uh, the Ace Man over the years, but maybe few too many gathering in one place. Not in the United States, but maybe in California. I say we take a handful of our Mexican brothers and we spread them out. Give a few to the D Dakotas. You know, people traveling, and they go, oh, I was over here, and I couldn't get a decent taco, or I couldn't get any good food, or I couldn't get... Spread it out, and we'll trade you, and we'll always have a nice mixture. We got 10% this and 20% that. And here's what I'm saying. Pick any culture. What state would you want to live in that was predominantly Japanese, predominantly Korean, predominantly French, predominantly anything? It, it'll it'll f up that country or that state because that state will just become that country that it has the predominant citizens of Minnesota, all Scandinavian, and they elected Jesse the Body as their governor. Right. <laughs> I say we bring a handful of Scandinavians over this way. Mm -hmm. We drop off a few of our Mexicans, and everything gets a sort of uh, copacetic, symbiotic balance to it. How say you? Well, well, I tell you, there's some, something wrong here in Los Angeles uh, mm -hmm. and Hollywood because I watched a, a film the other night starring uh, a, a Hispanic gentleman by the name of Emilio Estevez. Am I pronouncing that correctly? <laughs> I don't think he's We've, white. I, I don't think he's that's Hispanic. That's a pretty Hispanic name. Well, I think he has a Hispanic surname, but I, I really... We've passed the point of no return. Okay, so you're using that <laughs> as an example? Absolutely. Wow. Yes, Wow. Okay. That that that's my opinion. Because I, a Latino man got the the lead role. That's uh, yeah. It's a it's a difficult name. You know, I'm not <laughs> I'm not saying that that nobody should be allowed in this country. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying nobody with an accent. Mm. Interesting. Nobody, any so accents. Lose, leave the accent at the border. Absolutely. Absolutely. Leave and, your and what belongings. About, what I, about this great, but but what about the immigrants that came before? You know, I mean, what about there was a time when the Irish and the Italians. We're looked down upon. We're second-class citizens. Yet they assimilated and they helped build this country. But we look like the people on the money, so we fit in. I see. We got you. Got to look like the folks on the money, otherwise mm. it's hell's bells, and everybody's <laughs> w walking around. And is it you know? Is it a fun house? Is it jail? Yeah, what we don't is know it? what it is. What right. is it? It's, right. it's cloudy. Oswaldo, <laughs> yep. I'll say you. <laughs> you know. What do you say, Oswaldo? What is your plan? And I also hear that a lot of recent immigrants from uh, south of the border aren't necessarily fans of more people flooding in legally or not from south of the border. You know, everybody coming here is looking for a job. Mm -hmm. You know, he's not, not coming for look problem, you know, for, yeah. for making, you know, some... Uh, yeah, you're not, not a troublemaker. You know, something bad to, to this... This great countryman. Yes. You know. I, you know, I'm getting real tired of hearing that. You know, mm -hmm. this uh, this Mexican <laughs> punk uh, tried that on me, and I got in his face, and I said, pal, you know, when are you, when are you heading back uh, across the border? You know, and he tried, oh, you know, Mr. Martin, as soon as I'm done landscaping your driveway, and I said, that's no excuse. Yeah. You get back there right now, and you take this Cheesecake Factory buzzer, and I'll let you know when I need you to come back and put in the petunias. <laughs> right. I understand. <laughs> you know. Well, that seems, but that just seems mean-spirited. I mean, the Aussies say saying that people want to come across the border to contribute to our economy da and David, be a part of uh, the, the the dream that is America. That's da all he's saying. David, don't you see, if they keep flooding in here, we're going to have another Iraq? 
What? What? <laughs> Wait a second. All right. Is it like, we're going to have a civil war here? No, no we're going to have dangerously large numbers of poor people voting. Wow, you see, and that means maybe Republicans won't uh, get a third term in the White House. It's not good. Interesting. It's not good. Well, I will say <laughs> this in uh, defense of uh, Richard Martin, Republican from Ohio. The whole sort of uh, who's going to take the low-wage jobs, I'll tell you who's going to take them. I would have taken all of them out of high school, and so would every uh, uh, every MOOC I went to North Hollywood High with Thank who you. didn't go to college. Thank you. They do this. They, we do this. Things like, who's going to do this, and who's going to bust the dishes, and who's going to mop the floors, and who's going to pick the cabbage? Every guy I went to high school with who didn't go to college would have done that. I mean... I'm sorry, I know it's not uh, a popular opinion, but when I got out of high school, there were no jobs to be found, and I ended up getting a job cleaning a carpet, and I cleaned carpets for a year, and then I got a job digging ditches for seven bucks an hour. Poor people will work, and they'll always be poor people, and I don't care what color they are. When you're hungry, and you need to work, and someone hands you a shovel, you will start digging. When I was 18 and I got out of high school with my D average and my stupid parents living in North Hollywood trying to kick me out of the garage, it's not like someone handed me a shovel and I went, oh, I'm white. I don't dig ditches. No, I'm poor. Poor transcends every skin tone. I don't care how much melanin you have in your skin. Poor sure. trumps that. Someone hands you hand a poor guy a shovel. He starts digging because he needs money. He, he and it's not even a matter of pride or I don't do this or I don't do that. Sure, I got I got to get two hundred fifty bucks a week for my half of the rent. I got to get myself a few frozen pot pies and some top ramen, and I have no other source of income. Yes, I will dig these ditches. Hopefully, I'll just do it for six months or a year, and then I'll work my way up to carpenter's apprentice or whatever it is, and I'll buy some tools and I'll work it up. That's what we need to do. That's right. Now, it's noble that Ozzy wants to be that same sort of thing. You know, these people coming across the board are just, you know, impoverished people. I agree. They're, they're hardworking but, but, and they're here to work. But, but I, I do definitely want to say that there will always be people to bus dishes and dig ditches. It's the poor people. And they come in all shapes and colors. Thank you. Thank you. The more you know. The more you know. Go ahead. We need to wrap this up, by the way, but go ahead, <laughs> Richard. I, I just want to say that I wish I wish they would go back up across the border mm -hmm. where they belong until they're needed. I uh said -huh. we'll call on them when we need them. Absolutely. All Respect right. us. I like my redistribution plan where we just spread idea. it all around. We could all, and by the way, we'll trade up. I don't know. We may be short a handful of Japanese. Mm -hmm. I, don't they're, they're, so. I don't think so. Okay, now, now that's enough out of you. I'm just do, saying. Do they look like the folks on the money, Adam? Well, possibly <laughs> Do not. they look like the folks on the money? Maybe not. Maybe if you squint, but yeah. I don't think so. I, you, you have a point there. All I'm saying is, is there are some, we got, we're a little heavy in the Hispanic. We're a little bit light in other departments. We'll trade to one of the Dakotas. You give us a few of yours. We'll even it out. You get some decent food. We'll, uh, I don't know, we'll get whatever your people do, and that'll be uh, fantastic. Ozzy? Yeah. Um, Mr. Steve Martin, is it the name? No, yeah. not Steve Martin. Oh, no, Steve the, Martin's uh, funny. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you know, um, the, what's the problem, you know, the people say Mexican, Mexican. It's not it's Mexican, it's Latin people. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not. Okay. Here, here's the thing. You think they have, they're South America, they're Central America. Sure. There's, there's people from, you know, Nicaragua and Honduras, and you're yeah. calling them all Mexicans. Should I call them sub-Mexicans? No, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is is it's, 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 it's offensive, is calling a guy, you know, from Germany, French, or a guy from Sweden, sure. Albanian. You, you understand? Just because they may be white. I don't understand. Okay, let's wrap it up. <laughs> I want to thank Republican Richard Martin for coming in here. Please let's not have him back. He's just a creep. Askarepublican.com is uh, where you would go to uh, find out more of his uh, opinions. And yes, I, I could use some friends at uh, myspace.com slash askarepublican. Yeah, check in and, uh, you know, see if he can turn you out. And I've got a speaking engagement uh, oh, you do? Sat Saturday night. I'm going to be at Genghis Cohen on uh, Fairfax. Really? At 8 o'clock on Saturday night. Wow. It's a political show, and uh, uh, it's going to be just a hoot. you got to fire your agent. <laughs> yeah. All right, Republican uh, Richard Martin. Genghis Cohen over Saturday night. West L.A. or Los Angeles, I think that is. It's right in here. Beautiful food. I know it's, yeah. not, it's, yeah. not, it's not the kind of Viking food you normally eat. A couple too many uh, gays and Jews, but I'll be there. All right, well, yeah. fighting the good fight. Ozzy? Yeah. Nice Thank work. Thank you, Mr. Martin. <laughs> Look at him. 
a gentleman. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back. David Spade's going to be on the show. Brett Michaels all after this. Hey, this is Danny Bonaducci, and you're listening to the Adam Carolla Show. Mm-hmm. Check out of the studio. He's coming in. Something reminds me of a story, and then we'll get to our uh, hilarity in one second. But uh, Sheck came in a couple minutes, a couple seconds late. He's busy. He's working. You know what I used to do when I used to do Love Line with Dr. Drew? And by the way, this is the best way. If anyone has kids or anyone has a partner or anyone works with somebody, if you want to train somebody, this is the way to do it. You can talk to them. You can beg with them. You can plead with them. Or you could just... Uh, give them the uh, cold fist of death. I used to do it with Dr. Drew, which was Dr. Drew, when we used to do Love Line, would just be, you know, he'd done the show for 20 years. He'd been doing it for 15 years before I got there. Really? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, he did it for 10 years for free, just every Sunday night. Wow. So he used to just hang out in the halls, chewing the fat. Love Line had no hierarchy. You know, I would get yelled at by phone screeners and, you know... (laughs) I do like, uh, <laughs> hey, uh, Tara, few too many abortion calls this break, maybe. It's Tara. <laughs> she was a delight. I remember one time, phone screener Brian will back me up. One time I was talking to Tara, don't call me Tara, God damn it. And it was during the commercial, and I was like, Tara, um, it's Tara. Uh, okay, what, what we need to focus on here is phone calls. That, and, and as I'm in, in the middle of my speech, she points at the TV set, which is on, and starts laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, uh, I said, uh, I said, Tar- I said, Tara, I'm going to, I need you to really focus and listen to me. And she, she went, I can watch TV and listen at the same time. And I said, uh, look, I, I really need you to focus. And she goes, you're not my boss. <laughs> and I said, uh, really? It was very uncomfortable. And I said, you don't think I could fire you? No, really. You're the phone screener and I'm the host of the nationally syndicated show. You don't think I could hand your walk and be no <laughs> so anyway that's what it was like but uh what happened is dr drew used to like to stand out in the hall to the fat with uh, producer ann and god knows who else was walking down the hall and he wouldn't come in he knew i would be sitting here and start the show and he could sort of mosey in when he was good and ready and so i told him listen drew i need you in the studio when the show starts we're partners even though i do the talking i do the coming back from commercial legwork you still need to be sitting here when the show starts and the mics heat up yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, after about five times of him ignoring me, I just said, Drew, here's my policy. No talking until your ass is in the seat. We come back. You're not there. There's just dead air. Yeah, okay. And uh, it happened one more time. And I just <laughs> sat there. I just leaned back. Just did that. And all of a sudden, people were waving and like pointing. And I saw Drew running around. And he came sliding in and slid down. It was like, oh, oh. and I said, Drew, I don't talk if your ass is not in that chair. So if you want dead air, so be it. Go to the bathroom. Whatever it is. I don't care if you have an aneurysm. You're lying on the ground in there for an hour. I'll not be talking for an hour. And anyway, that was the last time he did it. My point is, is that's how mm-hmm. people are trained. See, well, I hope you're not threatening to enact that policy. Because no. it's really a threat to the listener. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not, I don't think I'm as essential a member of uh, the show no. as Dr. It, Drew was. No, we're not being paid the same. That That's really how I... That's really how I That's measure all this stuff, yes. All right, yesterday, late yesterday, we uh, played something for folks, but it struck us that uh, you folks listening in the 6 o'clock hour may not have heard this one. What's happening is the uh, Zacharias Musawi trial today is closing arguments, or yesterday's closing arguments, and maybe they're deliberating mm-hmm. today, and the, the trial was going along okay for Musawi before he started opening his mouth and talking about, again, they're calling this guy the 20th, a terrorist from 9-11. He, you know, allegedly knew about the plot before it was hatched, so on and so forth. And he got up on the stand and he started blabbing about supposed to be flying a fifth plane with the shoe bomber into the White House. Of course, his his, his representation, his attorneys were feverishly telling him to shut up, but he kept going. He basically hung himself and he kept going. Now, you just heard about the part where he was going to fly the fifth plane into the White House, but he said some other things that I think would anger the American public, mm-hmm. even if you didn't have a loved one or a friend in one of the towers on 9-11. We have exclusive tape of it, and like I said, if, uh, if this doesn't outrage America, I don't know what will. Richard Reed and I were to fly a plane into the White House on September 11th. I intended to go to Arlington Cemetery and light my farts with the eternal flame of John F. Kennedy's grave. (laughs) I wished to sit on the Lincoln Memorial in Ulysses' lap as a toilet while reading barely legal. Well, that's outrageous. I was going to the Veterans Hospital 
sneak up behind shell-shocked World War II veterans and loudly shout, Incoming! <laughs> that would have been good. He laughs. That is... Uh... He is sinister. Yeah, and, I, and I'm saying, if we didn't want to send this guy to the chair before, we, we certainly do now. Oh yeah, I mean this is inflammatory. I mean, like stuff. you, like you, you know, I I'm not for capital punishment, but I just about can make an exception in this case. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, the guy was looking good on Monday, and then he opened his mouth. I mean, there's even more, I think. I was going to kidnap the Bush daughters and make them perform pornographies on each other, <laughs> and then sell the video to drunk frat guys on late night TV. Wow. Mm. Wanted to fly to Hawaii, go to the Pearl Harbor Memorial. And be into the sunken remains of the USS Arizona. Out there. That is sickening. And he's going to use an American flag and strangle the Toby Keith. No! <laughs> Toby <laughs> Keith. That cuts it. Yeah. Well, I just hope uh, Representative uh, Martin is not listening to this driving his uh, American car home. <laughs> it's probably crashed. Wow. So sad. Is there? Is there any? Anyway, I pray that's all. That can't be. You're saying there's more? Mm-hmm. Ugh. Let's hear it. I was going to use a rock scaling harness, climb the face of Mount Rushmore, and use my feces to paint a mustache on Thomas Jefferson. No. Oh my God. No. Richard Reed and I wanted to use a drill to bore a hole in the Vietnam Wall, and then use it as a glory hole. Ah. I planned to go to the National <laughs> Zoo in Washington, D.C. and rape the pandas, and then kill a bald eagle and use its feathers to tickle a prostitute. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> this guy's a jerk. Yeah. And I said, Dave, you're you're as liberal as they come against the death penalty in most cases. I, you know, you've changed your mind in this on this case, one. You've heard enough. I yes, think. I hope uh, Representative Martin goes and takes him out himself. That yeah. is, I pray that's all. No, there's, there's more. Yeah. Oh no. There's uh, more. Okay. Uh, you know what? It's painful, but let's hear it. I was going to dig up the remains of Jimi Hendrix, Kurt Cobain, the Janis Joplin, Mama Cass, and Buddy Holly, and stage an old corpse marionette version of the death of a salesman. I was what? going to go to the National Holocaust Memorial and shout, Hey, look, it's Hitler. And when what? everybody turned around, I would say, I gotcha. You don't even want to know what I was going to do to the Statue of Liberty. Let's just say it involved a cement truck, a barge, and 287 pounds of red dye. Oh, now that's it. <laughs> he is twisted. That is, yeah, hey, uh, like I said, if uh, this is worse than whatever plans he had with the White House uh, in the 767. He didn't do himself any favors is the good news. I think he'll, the world will no. soon be rid of him. And thank God we apprehended him before he could hatch these plots. Oh, yeah. You know? Ugh. Okay. That's awful. All right. And uh, I hear even more tapes are going to be released, so, you know, stay. We're trying to track him down right now. Stay poised for that. God knows what else this monster had up his sleeve. Oh. All right, we will take a break. David Spade will be on the program. And then we'll be doing a little news, a little sports, all that coming up. All right, this is George Wood. Call Adam Carolla now at 1-866-901-ADAM. Yeah. George Wendt came in here in his underpants, a t-shirt, and one flip-flop. <laughs> I'm taking, I, I'm guessing he's not a morning guy. He was not excited about being here. But I seemed to loosen up and have a good no, time. No, it ended up being a delight, yeah. Yes, yes. Just clearly had no idea who I was. You can tell if people know who you are by how they dress. They show up dressed to the nines with a little rouge on. They've heard of you. They show up with a boner in a bathrobe. It means uh, they may not be big fans. All right. Speaking of well, big the boner fans, might suggest that. Well, but anyway. Well, but but if they got the boner before they came in, then ah, it would suggest okay. they're not fans. If they achieved it in in your presence, then they're big fans. David Spade. Yeah. <laughs> David Spade, George, big fan. George Wynn kind of walked through that promo, by the way. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was saying. He goes, "That's ah, George and whatever, and you're doing whatever." Yeah, <laughs> it's a funny thing. Promos are funny because. It's uh, after a guest has been waiting in our green room for an hour and then comes on for 11 minutes and plugs a project they're not interested in. We then cart them off to a second studio. I, I think they're in their car and they're like in another room. Like, where am I? Ah, uh, just a couple quick IDs. Yeah. You know what we need? How you love the show. It's like, what show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what we need is, is uh, plus, it, it's, it's always, it, then there's always the ones you try to sneak in for the afternoon guys, too. <laughs> yeah. Hey, 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 oh, Oh, you don't, uh, Boomer and Fudge Packer, come on at drive time. Could you just, they're big fans, and they clearly have never heard of them. 
<laughs> it's exactly right. I do them all the time. We, you know what we need? You know what they need? They need a live audience in those rooms because that would get the energy mm. up. You know what I mean? If you step, Meanwhile, it's you, also the B crowd. It's like some intern... David, want to give a little more something and going again. Right. Go, what? <laughs> yeah. You got Big Tad telling you to have fun with it. Yeah. Then they write them out for you. Just a little something I threw together, <laughs> written in your voice. Right. Like, is this what I sound like? What a moron. Yeah, there's nothing worse than somebody capturing your voice <laughs> and having it be horrible. It's true. You sound like the biggest dude. I like when they, well... Try doing the man show for four years. Like, Adam, me and you are exactly the same. When I'm done beating the F out of my wife uh, and cooking up some meth, exactly. I watched a man show and realized we are simpatico, my friend. Same thing. They go, Joe Dirt, I'm on meth, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, huh? You call that a mullet, Joe Dirt? Yeah, I hang out in front of El Pollo Loco and tweak all day. <laughs> exactly the same person. I had uh, somebody, and I can't remember who it was, but somebody, a huge fan of Joe Dirt, the other day I uh, ran into. I see. V vigorously uh, defending, and I will say this about Joe Dirt. Well, well, not, I won't call it a great movie, but thoroughly enjoyable. Seen it uh, more than fine, once. It's fine, right? It's fine. <laughs> Some, I'll tell you a movie that's going to be better than fine, Bench Warmers. Hey, now. April 7th. I'm going to the premiere on Sunday. Oh, you are going to go? Yes. Oh, good. I found out that somebody was a fan of mine over there, and that's all it takes. Who was it, Napoleon Dynamite? It was just a grip. Oh, good. But the point is, is there's oh. a fan. Now, I guess the guy who directed it. Oh, Dennis Dugan. Dennis Dugan. Pretty good. So, yeah, he, uh, he's good. If you ever want to stay around and do lots of takes, he'll help you out. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. Going again. That's always, a, uh, that's always an uncomfortable thing where you have to explain to somebody who's been watching you do a take, oh, no, I nailed it. And he says, <laughs> no, I'm let's try it again. Really and you're good. explaining that you nailed it. I like when they go, so great, we're going to do 10 more. And I go, what was so great about it then? Right. Or, well, or, <laughs> they do fun. the... Bench warmers is fun. The trick is about it is that when you do a baseball movie, he knows a lot about baseball. And you forget that it's like shooting 24 because you got like the POV of the pitcher and then you got the catcher's POV, then you got the first base. Mm -hmm. I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, I got to do all my dumb jokes 90 times. Right, because they're catching it from a thousand angles. Listen, how many times can I take a rock in the nardules? <laughs> <laughs> like in the trailer, I saw a rock at Schneider, he's mowing the lawn, and yeah. it misses him, and it goes in the lawnmower and comes right back in my nard. <laughs> Dude, you're not going to see that in Ice Age, too. No way. No way. They don't have the guts scroll. to do a mower rock in the nard skag. Dude, and then they sat there with, like, a tennis ball gun mm -hmm. with rocks in it, fake rocks that are about 90% a real rock. Right. And then they just get right off camera about three feet away from my NARS, and he's got, like, goggles on and a helmet. He's like, boom, <laughs> right into my balls. I'm like, ah! Did you, yeah, it's like, these, are, uh, these aren't real rocks. This is crushed granite put together yeah. with Portland cement. And I'm like, it's <laughs> actually harder than a rock. <laughs> And then he goes, uh, I'm like, why don't you just throw a rock at him? Like, it's easier. Right. And you might hit me in the ball. Because he kept hitting me, like, in the chest and the leg, and I got welts on me. I'm like, guys, guys. Well, the thing about throwing, when I tried to do, we tried to do that on the man show once, and uh, the union freaked out because there's a whole cannon rock firing to the NADS right. union that's pretty strong here in Hollywood. And those guys will walk <laughs> on you. They're, they're, they have a more power, they're more powerful than the Teamsters. They're more powerful than that lo late walkout I've been seeing lately. Yeah. What's going on? No one's going to school, but go ahead. You talk, are you talking about the uh, the Mexicans? Yeah, I'm not going to fix that overnight. So let's no, but, <laughs> if, but, but, but if anyone could, it'd be you. Well, I went to Home Depot. Here's what I did my part. On my show, uh, on that showbiz show, mm -hmm. I, I fire my assistant. Mm -hmm. And I go, I'll give someone else a break. So I go to Home Depot and hire the day workers. Yeah. <laughs> and I go, who is good with a Blackberry? And they're all just staring at me. <laughs> go, who, knows, who knows final draft? <laughs> Some guy comes up, adios mio. So I go, all right, good enough. So he comes and he's my assistant all day. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm like, take a letter. Dear Joaquin. <laughs> I think it's a J. It might be a W. Can he pronounce your name? And he goes, Mr. David. Oh, he can't say David. See, my oh, because I had him call Pam Anderson and uh, and and tell her I'm having a barbecue. So she's like, "It's Pam. Leave a message." And I go, "Pam." And he goes, "Pang." Yeah. <laughs> I go, I, in Malibu, and he's like, "In my uh, yeah." I go. Everyone's dressing very skimpy. 
And he's like, Vegas, kinky. <laughs> I go, you know what? I could have made that call. <laughs> well, but to be fair, David, if you went to like Guadalajara and you were going to be an apprentice to a mason, you know what I mean? I How good a that, job well, would you it's do? Also, like, is every Mexican a bus boy? I mean, <laughs> no. They're, and they're taking the jobs away from the guys that some I do stucco, but no, <laughs> yes, I, I agree. They're not all. It's eighty percent bus boy, twenty percent stucco it's guys. A tough argument like look who's gonna do your dirty work that's us yeah so i don't know i just uh i, I you know what i stayed out of it this time adam smart yeah i sit in my office and i blow smoke rings out like you do. <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> and you're talking to a dictaphone <laughs> <laughs> i go take a note i have another funny thought Right. Well, the Showbiz uh, show is back on Comedy Central oh, Thursdays yeah. at uh, 1030. I want to give that a plug. And also, uh, Bench Warmers coming out on April 7th. we got to take a break, David. But I will see you in Westwood on Sunday. Oh, yeah, that'll be fun. Now, pretend like you know me, right, oh, brother? Have a good time. All right. Looking All right. forward to seeing Thanks you there. Thanks for having me, guys. Thanks, Thanks for coming on. Bye-bye. We'll uh, take ourselves a little break. We'll be back with news. We'll be back with sports. Brett Michaels, we're having a uh, the first ad- annual Adam Off. There's uh, going to be impersonations of moi and uh, much, much more after this. You're listening to the Adam Carolla Show. Call Adam now at 866-901-ADAM. Mm-hmm. Well... We have the Adam impersonators starting to line up. They're queuing up Ooh, in the la, green la. room. This is going to be dynamite. <laughs> yeah. A lot that of was hev- the whitest dynamite ever. A lot of heavy hitters <laughs> out there, by the way. Not comedically, just, you know, morbidly obese. Mm-hmm. A, lot of big, a lot of big bone guys out there. Evidently, I tracked that crowd. No one, no one uh, an ounce under 215 coming into this room to do the ace man. <laughs> Point is, is that's uh, coming up. I gave them now what we're going to do is we're going to do the sort of compulsory parts, like the figure skating, and mm-hmm. then there'll be a freestyle competition, <laughs> too. The compulsories are my analogies. I uh, am uh, evidently somewhat famous for giving analogies. I don't know why I'm attracted to them, and I don't write them down or tabulate or compile them. So when somebody says we need one of your analogies, I have to search the Internet. Oh, actually, my wife searched the internet last night while I yelled at her. Find me an analogy. Go to one of those old Loveline uh, chat room things and go find me a good analogy. Is that true? They show up. Your analogies show up on the if you just plug them into the website. Yeah. Uh, wow. Well, no, I don't know how it works, but uh, I, you know, you do Loveline. I did Loveline for ten years, and a lot of teenagers l- would listen to the show, and it was a big national show, and they all have computers, and there was all these unofficial websites and homepages and all sorts of stuff like that, and so they would have these companions, and they would have ar- audio archives and you know quotes of the week and all that kind of stuff. What's that, Brian? Sorry. The message board stuff. Oh. And uh, modesty and illiteracy prevented me, mm. not in that order, from ever really <laughs> checking them out. But once in a while, my wife would get on and go find a quote or something like that. And it was kind of weird because it was like a resource for yourself. It would, it would happen from time to time that someone would say, we're doing this print campaign or we need, uh, we need a slogan or we need a quote or we need a something. And I would just go, oh, well, I'll just go to the uh, Loveline Companion and see if I can find something I said that was funny from three years ago. Maybe that'll do. Imagine how helpful a book of all these of all these. It would lessons. be great if I could spell... Or, or, or write or do anything. <laughs> well, you I, get but, a shadow writer, but the book is yours. I had, so I had... What, did no, Paris Hilton write her own book? That's a good point. <laughs> I didn't even know she had a book. <laughs> so I, does Nicole. I thought that was just uh, hollowed out. <laughs> she kept her gun and her birth control in it. <laughs> P- point is, is uh, I had to send my wife on a uh, wild goose chase last night on the internet. I would be yelling at her, that's not funny. And she'd be like, well, you said it. <laughs> Yeah, still, that was lame. Give me a good one. So I found four analogies, and uh, they are going to do my analogies, each a separate one, and then that's a compulsory part, and then the freestyle steps in. Interesting. All right. This is going to be fun. First, we're going to uh, move forward. We're going to do some uh, news. Filling in for Rachel Perry, Claudia. Wait a minute. D, D, no, let's see. D... D, someone help me out. It's not but a Fuko. Yeah, but it's 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 not the uh, what the hell. I never written down anywhere here. I it's it should have an A. 
It's I agree with that. It sounds better. Yeah. It should, it should be it should be DeFalco, not DeFalco. Right. That's why. That's why it always it always hits me. It's the A and the other. Anyway, I filling just like in to be different. Filling in for Rachel Perry in the news, <laughs> Claudia DeFalco. <laughs> Kidnapped U.S. reporter Jill Carroll has been released in Iraq after nearly three months in captivity. After she spoke to her father, she was reported in good condition. You know, then, I, I uh, sorry, I stopped you four syllables in, but I was watching that this it's morning your show. at uh, <laughs> five in the morning. I like your style, baby. <laughs> By the way, that it's your show attitude could take you a long, long way in this business. A long way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, where was I? Oh, yes. The uh, kidnapped reporter, yeah, they just eventually got tired of her and let her go. We never did find her. But it strikes me, how hard are the uh, ground forces looking for the liberal reporter who just got done writing an article for LA Weekly called Blood for Oil? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, okay, sh- all right, sweetie. Oh, we're the, oh we're, a baby killer's over here? Not doing our job? Okay, <laughs> have fun. You know what she's saying? That the, uh, her, her captors treated her very well. Yes, which makes me think she's very liberal. Because uh, I would never say that. I would have plenty of complaints. Well, you thought, you mentioned when we first saw her, you you thought her to be a fox. She she's attractive for, uh, for that gig. Yeah. FHM agreed. They put her on her top one hundred list. <laughs> I always, uh, you know, uh, maybe this is sick and morbid and and whatever. It, they never talk about the uh, sort of sexual component of the whole thing, which is a bunch of horny dudes trying to defile the white infidel and keeping her in captivity for three months. Is there raping going on here? Is that against their religion? We, we They never really talk about it, but they're misogynists. I mean, do the math. They're horny, they're misogynists, and they hate Whitey. Well, she said she was treated well, so either they didn't rape her or they happened to be tremendous lovers. Interesting. Yes, I've learned from One watching. Maybe from a love watching story is going to come out of this. Hours of porn that women eventually like it when you force themselves on you. They give it. <laughs> yes. Maybe she will be the one to bring peace in the Middle East. It'd be nice. In entertainment news, last night on American Idol, Lisa was eliminated. Mm. Mm, so sad. How do you feel looking back at this trip? You know, this has been the experience of a lifetime, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. That's right. She's 16. She's talented. She's good. Simon can't be taking this too well. Paul Abdul has signed on for three more years with yeah. American Idol. Hmm. Wow. Let me tell you something. What, I don't care yeah. what I don't care what contestant they eliminate. What they need to eliminate is Randy Jackson's stupid stolen dog pound uh, thing. Let's, I second that. From this day forward, let's replace it with the fish tank. How say you, fish tank? <laughs> Thank you. Is there nobody on that staff that can approach him and remind him that this is something that was effed out in 1989? Yes. Nobody, <laughs> including yeah, the Cal's dog busy pound. insulting everybody. This he doesn't have time to say, "Hey, uh, Jackson." You swipe this bit. <laughs> yes. I remember when we were first doing this show and I said, fellas, I got an idea for a bit. It's called Heine Wine. And Brusca said, no, Rick Dees used to do that in the uh, mid 90s. And I said, I don't care. I'm doing it anyway. It's that funny. If it's good, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's timeless. Like the wine I speak of. And he said, uh, no, no, we can't because someone else already did it. And I respected him for it. And thanks to Ryan Seacrest, Terry Hatcher may not be so desperate anymore. Pictures have been published showing the two smooching. Mm. Here's Ryan commenting to Extra about Hatcher fueling the rumor. Terry Hatcher? Oh my, God. oh my gosh. You're making me blush. Yeah, I'm trying to. I think she's great. I, I, I saw her at the Grammys in that beautiful dress. I took it off. I, uh, I like the part. Where, you know, she was on the cover of uh, Vanity Fair, whatever the hell it was, uh, last month. And it's like shocking tales of sexual abuse. Meanwhile, she's wearing a thong back and has pasties on, standing on the cover. It's like, hey, uh, hey t- Terry, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to make you cry by talking to you about your grandfather sexually abusing you in the basement of your Kentucky home. Uh, let's show a little more ass. Can we please show some more ass? You yes, know what- give a little cheek spread. It's red. Uh, it's red. Uh, how, uh, uh, did your grandfather do this to you or... Don't cry, sweetie. The makeup's running. Let's see a little more ass. Perfect. What a bizarre and weird message and strange world this is for an atheist. Seeing this woman wearing a cocktail napkin covering her right booby and showing all ass cheek and everything. It's like sexual abuse. The whore. Okay. So sexual abuse is good. I'm getting horny. Wow. That's that sort of troubled pass that leads you into the arms of Ryan Seacrest. Evidently. 
Also in hookup news, as we reported yesterday, Jessica Simpson may be adopting a baby, but Nick Lachey may have adopted a babe. MTV's Vanessa Manillo, who is also uh, the vixen is in his new video. Manx. Mm-hmm. She's, she's not on the list, right? I don't know, but she's a fox. She's fox. She's on, she's on my list. She makes the fox news in my world. Uh, you know who is on the list? Angelina. Mm. There may be trouble in paradise for Angelina and Brad. He wants to set a wedding date. She doesn't. And it looks like she's getting tired of his whining and mm-hmm. misses the good old days when, you know, when he was still married to Jen, when he was independent and masculine. Yeah, I... Uh, she's going to dump him. She's too hot. She really... Uh, it, it seems like, you know, it's one of those... She seems like some sort of, like, workout routine that I could stay with for a couple of weeks to shed a few pounds, but I couldn't imagine making a lifestyle out of this. Honey, uh, it's Sunday. I'm going to be... I'm watching the game with the boy. Hell no, we're going to Cambodia. <laughs> What? Yeah, we got to adopt. And then we're speaking in front of the UN. And then we're going to fly a model. We're going to fly a, a single single uh, engine aircraft over. And we're going to do a water landing. And then we're going to adopt some more kids. And then it's off to uh, the former Soviet Union. We're going to adopt. I'd be like, I can't. I want to watch some TiVo masturbate, sweetie. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, this is not this is interfering with my plans of sleeping through life. But poor sweet relief comes in the form of the Grim Reaper. She's going to dump him soon. Who's with me on that? Yeah, she's too she's, hot. She's, she's, she's the crazy chick. She's nuts, though. She's yeah. she's nutty. And, and the thing about nutty, here's what nutty is. Nutty is a 10. It's, 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 you have one speed when you're nutty, and it's, and it's super high speed. So when you get into a relationship, you start wearing around vials of each other's blood, and you start getting tattoos, and it's, I love this person, and we're getting it on in the limo on the way to the Golden Globes and all this kind of stuff. But then, breaking up's a 10, too. Yep. Done. What you want is a nice, solid five. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Give me that five, everybody. I'm Clyde DeFalco, and I'm done. (laughs) It's time for Dave Damashek's number one sports. Number one sports. Do it, Dave. NBA. The days dwindle down to a precious few. For those teams fighting for the last couple playoff spots, the Kings of Schwarzenegger have maintained their game and half lead on the New Orleans slash Oklahoma City Hornets for the eighth spot in the Western Conference with a win last night over Portland. Hornets kept pace by beating Golden State. Seattle Seahawks head coach Mike Holmgren says he's considering retiring after this season. Apparently, he's developed a lot of back problems from carrying around that giant mustache he wears on his face, especially since the Super Bowl when the stash got waterlogged with those tears from all the crying he did about the referee. Sure as hell Creep. wasn't Gatorade being dumped on him that logged that stash. Hey, man, no, that Gatorade was reserved for the winners, a team named the Pittsburgh Steelers. How say you, Fish Tank? Thank you. <laughs> Final four in just two days. It'll be the Florida Gators versus the George Mason Cinderella's, and, of course, LSU going up against UCLA. I've made this decision. I'm going to watch it. Really? Yes. You will be home watching TV yes, on a I've Sunday. I've decided I will watch <laughs> it. Wow. Yes. Great shame in Durham, North Carolina, where the Duke lacrosse team is all suspended after an exotic dancer accused several of them of sexual <laughs> assault. Some are calling it the greatest embarrassment to the state since Clay Aiken. Or perhaps <laughs> Dawson's Creek. Specifically, the appearance of Adam Carolla. Duke, well, what are you going to do? Duke Lacrosse was my porn name. <laughs> yes, I played you a Frenchman. You did a lot of work in the porn Well, this so was gay names. porn, but oh, oh. Uh, Duke Lacrosse. Have you worked with Duke Lacrosse? No, I won't. Not anymore. Too big. Yeah. <laughs> Duke Lacrosse is too much man for me. That and, would be a solid porn name. Duke Lacrosse. Yeah, that is nice. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially in light of this story. Yeah. What? Some cachet. Though, yeah. You know. Sure. Now, bad news for Giants fans. Major League Baseball is going to investigate the alleged steroid use mm. by Barry Bonds. Mm. And uh, it's going to be head up by uh, former U.S. Senate Majority Leader George, Mitch- M- George Mitchell. And uh, is that right? They, oh, they're about to. They, I, they, I, they, uh, couldn't be more uh, more timely. He's walking into the press conference right now. The police could contact him at any moment. But here, let's see if we can get into that. Well, fellas, oh. Johnny Law's got me in his sights. But hear me now and hear me well. I came by these muscles fan square. Barry Bonds don't do no dope. And any Jamuku says different's got a knuckle sandwich in their future. I ain't scared of nobody. Excuse me. Hello. 
Officer Sheldrake. It's Officer Sheldrake. Yes, but... Mm-hmm. I, I suppose... I'm sorry. <laughs> Whatever you say. <laughs> Very well. I'll turn myself in ASAP. And again, I'm sorry. Now, where was I? I was... Uh, uh, nuts. I gotta go. That's Bonds? <laughs> wow. That was Bonds. Yeah. Wow. Barry Bonds. He's got a weird ring on that cell phone. Yeah, no, well, I, I, I don't know about that sort of thing. But, I mean, he, uh, it was pretty defiant, but it sounds like he's yeah. going to be taken oh, down a peg or two. Yeah. 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 yeah, Sheldrake's going to take him down. He means business. Dave Damashek's number one sports. All righty. Well, Brett Michaels is here from Poison. We'll talk to him in uh, just a, suck, a second. And then we're going to have the uh, first Adam. Can't say that. First annual Adam off. It sounds so gay. Maybe we should get Duke it Lacrosse is. in on that one. Yeah. <laughs> we have an all star lineup who is going to do uh, impersonations of yours truly. They're preparing their material as we speak. Brett Michaels next. You're listening to the Adam Corolla Show. Call Adam now at 866 901 Adam. There's a little poison for you, Brett Michaels. Just coming into studio. Good to see you, Brett. Good to see you, Adam. How you doing this morning? I'm doing well. Awesome. How are you doing? I'm doing great, thanks. I was uh, looking at my notes here. We got the uh, 20 Years of Rock Best of CD, which is coming out on Tuesday. Over 22 million records sold. 15 top 40 singles. And a 10-acre Malibu ranch. We're still waiting for that first royalty check. They tell me it's coming. Yeah, how After, does how does that work? We were I'm not exactly sure how the legalities of it work. We were one of the fortunate bands that in the beginning of our career when we were writing Every Rose and mm -hmm. Something to Believe in and and all these songs, uh no one was really that interested in our publishing or doing a record with us. Right. So they the the good side of it is they let us keep all that. And in the end it ended up being Millions, uh, yeah, ended it, up being a blessing. Is it all? Is it all about the, the publishing and the royalties and that kind of stuff? Because I was just talking to someone the other day, trying to figure out whether people. It's hard to tell whether people in the music industry are filthy rich because they've had some platinum records or never saw anything other than the initial check they got from the record company. <laughs> is it all about having your name on that royalty? I think you know what I'll say. This I I, I know that. Seeing a platinum record, it, it feel it may feel great as a stroke to an ego, but I don't think it means anything unless you go back and I don't know the how every contract works. I know with ours, we were pretty street smart and we got offered a lot of deals when we first started out. Mm -hmm. And I, I didn't know much about much, but I have a good learning curve and I read some of this stuff and I was like, this looks like we'd have to sell 52 million records to make 52 cents. And even though when you start out, you're not in it for the money, you're in it to have. I mean, we yeah. were living... You want to get laid. Mostly, yeah. yeah. I mostly wanted to get laid. And I'll you, do the fun math. I know you were going to say to have fun, but I'll do the fun math <laughs> Thank you. on that. But, but it's but, true. And then and then if you do something, we were pretty fortunate. We were we all looked at stuff and said, these contracts, a lot of them suck. And so we did our own independent record, and then Capital came and picked us up from that. So you're fine. Hence the uh, 10 acres up in Malibu. And what about... Uh, and the other question i had about that is is some bands everyone is cut in and kissed in equally right like if you're in you you too everyone gets 25 percent whether you're playing the hollowed out fish or whether you're actually <laughs> penning the song right i mostly Which, play the hollowed out fish well that's the kind of band i'd like to get into hey uh tracy i mean adam play the tambourine over there would you sweet pea and shake your ass and here by the way is a royalty check I stayed up all night doing coke writing this song, but here's your cut of it. <laughs> now, did Poison have that, or is it is it you that's getting the lion's share of the dough? No, we are 25% each. Wow. Yeah, we, we split. We decided, listen, we if we're going to live in this uh, back half of a dry cleaner down here and struggle to make it together, regardless of who did what or who wrote what, that uh, it was important that, that we all sort of went up and down the ladder together mm -hmm. and you started you where did you start off in the midwest somewhere no uh actually pennsylvania 
Hmm. Yeah, it's sort of Harrisburg, uh, right? Harrisburg. Yeah, we originally right. Pittsburgh. I was born in Pittsburgh. Is that it, right? Yep. My dad was in the Navy, so we ended up at the Inland Naval Depot in good old Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Fantastic. I'm from uh, Wilkinsburg. PA. I know it very well. We play up there, Montage. It's well, Scranton. Mechanicsburg is sort of an oxymoron. They I use mean, it in the Simpsons a lot. First time you ever hear <laughs> "berg" at the end of the word "mechanic." You, you know what I mean? Normally, you don't hear <laughs> "berg" <laughs> or "Stein." Two things you don't hear affiliated with the it's word true. "mechanic." <laughs> Nobody has a mechanic that's a word burger sign, yeah. but mechanics burg is jumbo shrimp. You know what? <laughs> the hell's that? <laughs> Confusing for the folks living there. Elliot Mechanics Berg has never walked the face of the earth. Right. Yeah. Your dad, I'm guessing, uh, from the looks of you and uh, growing up in Mechanicsburg <laughs> and your dad being in the Navy and whatnot, not a Jew? Not a Jew. No. Okay. No. No, no shame in that. No, no. No shame in not being a Jew. <laughs> so uh, you're from Mechanicsburg. That's where the band, that's where Poison gets together. That's where, where it all starts. That was the mecca. Of our career was in Mechanicsburg, uh, playing places like the Paradise, where we would move the pool table out of the way and right. m- move our gear in and play, and, and you play every cover song, and eventually we just said, look, we wrote our own stuff, and we'd start playing uh, a bunch of songs that we had written, and that didn't go over very big. People weren't drinking beer and dancing to our music, so the bar... You know the bar owners didn't want us back, so we picked up and moved out to the Los Angeles area. What and year is this now? This is March of '84. Wow, early, yeah. early '80s. Yeah. And how long before things break? Uh, it, it was about really about two and a half, three years. We just kind of we were out there for a while, and we just decided that we we wanted to do an independent record on our own we were getting nowhere we we went into every single label they all turned us down Mm -hmm. um you know we did a lot of demo deals Mm -hmm. you know which is a write-off for most of the labels uh we didn't know that we thought they love us we're gonna make it this is gonna be huge and and so uh finally we put out uh, look what the cat dragged in and released talk dirty to me and right then there was a station called knac that was just breaking right a rock station out of long beach and they played the song and it just kind of it really took it. We shot the video ourselves for like five grand and just threw a party and played music like we always did and it just hit. And you you, you invested your money, you hung on to your money, you're fine, yeah, you're we good? Did, yeah, we did all right. Do you have we, to work anymore? No. No, wow. you're good from you're good I'm from good. that. But I love. Here's can I make a statement? Yes, I, I go want ahead. to clear this up because a lot of bands of our genre get a lot of crap. But there's a lot of bands of every genre who have people that had great business managers and really really awful business managers, and we were just one of the fortunate ones that w- had some great people around us in the beginning of our career. And and I th- and I say this, I would make music regardless mm-hmm. because you look at people like De Niro and De Niro. I don't think he's acting because he needs the money. I, I love making music, and I've gone out there, and we'll get done playing a... We were talking about this, playing at Irvine, and then I'll go across the street to a club <laughs> and, and go play that night for, for nothing and just have a great time. I feel the same way with comedy. Um, of course, it wouldn't be five days a week in this hellhole, but I'd come in for like <laughs> I come in for like eight minutes between noon and four o'clock on a Wednesday and, you know, do, do my thing. I mean, if if I wasn't getting paid, that's Courage. what I'm saying. I have a love. He's a correct. I have a no, marginal a- love of the sport of comedy. All right, uh, Oswaldo is here. Ozzy, how say you? I'm here, Bing. That's good. It's <laughs> a good start. <laughs> Ozzy is uh, my uh, brother. When I used to do carpentry, Ozzy and I worked together for many years. I swore one day I'd get on FM radio and take you out of that hellhole known as carpentry. And I was true to my word, was I not, Ozzy? Yeah, um, free FM. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> nice job, buddy. Ozzy does all our movie reviews uh, here on the program, and we thought he'd do a little review of your infamous sex tape with Pamela Anderson. Now, what what oh. year was this shot in? Pardon the pun. I would. Uh, <laughs> I want to say. Uh, I want to say ninety. It was not. It was Halloween of ninety four. Smart. Ninety five. Something like that. Yeah, you got in early and often. Were you guys? <laughs> Were you guys a boyfriend? You never got married. Were no. you engaged or anything? How long uh, did you guys date? We we dated for about, I'd say about a year and a half. Uh-huh. Yeah. And whose idea was it to make the tape? Uh, it was a little bit of both. You know what I mean? I mean, we, we were going to the... Uh, up to the mansion, uh, the Playboy Mansion that night to do a, uh, to go to the Halloween party and just have mm-hmm. some fun. And it was really, wasn't, you're going to laugh, it wasn't done actually to be a tape. It was done more for the, we had a bunch of TV screens and just stuff around. It was, I know, gotta doing say, something interesting. I, out of respect for you and Pam and not being able to negotiate the internet, I've never seen the actual footage of it. I have. 
Big Tad has. Have, yeah. Unclear who you're <laughs> masturbating to, by the way. Sorry, Brett. I forgot to mention that to you. Please admit that you were doing it to Brett more I was, than I, Pam. I was doing it to Pam, sorry. And, uh, yeah. I, how's I think, Brett doing I would say down? about 99.9%. Uh, <laughs> how's he doing downstairs, by uh, the way? Uh, you know, I don't judge dudes. Right. But, uh, it's impossible. I, yeah. uh, Go, gentle. Huge. I'm in the room. Huge. Huge. Yeah, yeah. I, I have this theory. Everyone's always like, oh, man. He's lying, but it's nice. He knows I'm in the room. Everyone who does, every, every guy who films himself having sex is magically hung, but that's the way it works. You, I didn't use a watch. See, my problem was it was bad lighting, and, and I didn't know it would ever, ever see the light of day. I I kind of wish if I would have went back, it would have heated the room up a little more and sure. better lighting and a wide-angle lens. You were, but you were looking was, more at, a, at the uh, TV screen than see, Pam. he's saying what I'm saying, and that's what yeah. won our case, is it right. was never meant to be a... Vi- but anyway, go ahead. I, I'm just go saying ahead. a guy, a guy when a guy's... <laughs> I'm giving him free tickets to defend my <laughs> size. When a guy's uh, hung like a chapstick it. cap, he doesn't think, let's get the tripod right. out, honey. Right. Shut the lights, and uh, let's do it through a hole in the sheet like the Hasidim. <laughs> <laughs> Although the sheet, the, the sheet, if you go two plies, too thick for the ace man. <laughs> All right, Ozzy, yep. you, you saw the Ozzie. film. You saw the sex will... tape. You saw it a long time ago. Yeah. All right, back in Nicaragua, or they're showing it on the plane over <laughs> here. over here. Okay, so you have a review for us. Yep. Good. We have a very special new introduction for that. Oswaldo. Tell us about some celebrity sex tapes. We want to know is <laughs> celebrity sex tapes you have seen. Go ahead, Oswaldo, tell us. A long time ago, I saw the sex video with Pamela Ardenson and Brett Michael. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I see in the video that Pamela is hungry and thirsty. She's thirsty, too. Thirsty, yeah. <laughs> she very experienced in the movie. Mm-hmm. She doing a good job. <laughs> <laughs> she make it sex and I saw that she was not happy. Not and happy. Not coordinated. No, not coordinated. Yeah. <laughs> well, she could have had a few glasses of champagne She's or something. She's thinking something other than she make it. She's what? She she thinking other, other thing, you know. To her mind, she, she somewhere going. else. Yeah. Oh. In the moon. Wow. Well, I, I, he's, <laughs> he's a harsh critic. Yeah. In the movie, Brett Michael look like his. Like what? Like he having, you know, a really good time. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> sure. He's a very lucky man. Well, it's not luck. The Brett Michael and Pamela Ardenson sex day left this reviewer called. Oh, wow. <laughs> it sounded like he was a fan of the sex tape until and then the it end. Went, went bad at the end. Left him cold. Yeah. So brutal, Ozzy. I'll tell you what, Ozzy, go back and watch it again. Maybe it'll change your views. Uh, no more cream. Oh, okay. You need more. <laughs> nice celebrity shot. Celebrity sex tapes. Review. We hope you did not uh, you. Well, for that, for being a good sport, Brent Michaels deserves uh, one hell of a plug. And here it goes. His, uh, the new CD, The Best of Poison, 20 Years of Rock, in stores Tuesday. So that's coming up yes. this Tuesday yes. in uh, five days or so, right? Right. And then the tour kicks off uh, in uh, early June. Mm-hmm. Where yep. do you start out of here? Big Tad will be there. I will be we, at both places. Yeah. Well, we. I know uh, I know Phoenix, we're down at Cricket Pavilion. I know it, uh, in L.A. we're at uh, Blockbuster. Or Glen, Glen Helen, Helen Pavilion. Glen Helen. And we're mm. also Universal Amphitheater. Yes. He'll be Fresno uh, and Reno and all this. Tad will be, be a roadie at if all I can. those places. <laughs> yes. we, gotta, we already worked him out. See, I, I, what I should have done is I, I greased come? him. Uh, yes, you may yes. come. You <laughs> can be my date. <laughs> I greased him with great tickets and passes, so he gave me a great review, and that's why I love him. I didn't get to him first. Mm. If I would have got to him with them tickets, it would have been a much better review. <laughs> he was yeah. already greased he was from <laughs> the ribs he ate this morning. <laughs> Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to grease Tad. If he closes no, his mouth great. and pinches his nose and pushes hard, bacon fat will come from his pores. Yes. Yeah, yeah. All right. Tad, it's going to be great to see you up on the shoulders of your, your guy pal up there holding the lighter. <laughs> I'll have the lighter head. and I'll have the I Love uh, Brett Michaels t-shirt. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Brett, thank you for coming in. Hey, you're welcome. We'll thank be, you for having me We'll on. be back with the uh, impersonation competition of moi after this. <laughs> you're listening to the Adam Carello Show. Call Adam now at 866-901-ADAM. And do it right now. Yes, you should. 866-901-ADAMS, the phone number. We're going to do a little Corolla off here. We have uh, four ringers in the studio. 
They are going to do their best impersonation of me. We will judge a winner now. It's not all about tone. I mean, it's important to sound like me, uh, but yeah. but the attitude. Did I say that? <laughs> the attitude is good. The material's good. It all gets factored in. Also, uh, the way we're going to do this is we're going to do the compulsory part of it, which is a prepared statement. It's one of my analogies I had my wife find on the Internet last night. We got four separate ones. I've given it to uh, all the boys. Our so four some crew that's been assembled. Yes. Uh, Cousin Sal is here from uh, Jimmy yeah. Kimmel Live. Thanks for having me. The Man me. Show, many other places. Thanks for being on the show, Sal. I know it's early for you. It's going to be a good time. Ray Oldhoffer. Guy I've known since the fourth grade. You've uh, seen him on the uh, TLC show. I did. He was the guy who was uh, naked, pulling a scrotum up over his penis and yelling "turtle attack." <laughs> also, perhaps to some best, maybe yeah. maybe best remembered for uh, when applying for a job at the Man Show, decided that it would make a good impression on the, the boss Jimmy Kimmel, and so he pooped in his desk. Here say it, it was a little payback, I think, for something that uh, Jimmy did to me. Oh, you know what it was? Is <laughs> it was a great moment. Jimmy, I mean uh, Ray, has been wanting to break into show business about a week before I got into show business. The thing is, is he didn't want to write or be funny or memorize lines or anything. He just figured if I got in, he could get in too. Like it was a job down at the docks. I'd somehow broken in. He knew a union leader over there. Now he could get a gig driving a forklift. So it was he, my best move. He wanted in on the man show. Jimmy played a practical joke on me where he'd convinced me that the lead singer from the Dixie Chicks was stalking me and uh, forced me to make a very embarrassing phone call that he recorded to her telling her... Uh, uh, even though the ace man was hot, he uh, there wasn't enough of him to go around for all the ladies. <laughs> and it was very humiliating. The point is, is, Ray decided to get a little vigilante justice by defecating in the top drawer of Jimmy's desk. <laughs> and not in the deep one on the side, but the very thin one that you keep the pencils in. I don't remember. Did you get the job? Uh, yeah, but it was on like a three-year <laughs> delay. Maybe four. Yeah, he did not He did not end up getting that gig. He did call me, though, th that evening and explain to me that there was a fresh log waiting for Mr. Kimmel. <laughs> <laughs> First thing when he got into work, and then it became like a, a skit from, uh, from a, from a uh, bad... Uh, National Lampoon movie where I said, Ray, you got to break into the man show office and you have to retrieve that Duke before Kimmel finds it because he's not going to think it's funny. <laughs> done and done, by the way. 5.30 a.m. Yeah. Got there. Gets there at 5.30 a.m. Dressed as a shrub. Moving closer and closer to the building. Infiltrates it. Shoulder roll through the main, w main window and then steals the Duke back. Now, was that your dookie, or was that our buddy John's dookie that you placed there? The latter. It's uh, John's. John's. So he retrieved someone else's defecation. Did you give it back? <laughs> Actually, I still have it. <laughs> Open your wallet and show it. Sal. <laughs> Takes the duke back. But what happens is, is uh, two weeks later, my stupid buddy, the wheeze, ends up blabbing. To Jimmy uh, during a uh, drunken dinner conversation that Ray defecated in his desk, and that was enough. The damage had been done. Lynch, this music is not appropriate when we're talking about Ray. Please play Planet of the Apes. He's more beast than man. So, anyway. Beast than man! Cousin Sal here, Ray here, Bill Cott, voice man extraordinaire. Bill Cott is here, and uh, Jeff Richards as well. You remember from uh, Saturday Night Live, also a great impressionist. So we have some civilians and we have some pros. But like I said, it's up for grabs. It's not all just on, it won't be judged all on technical <clears throat> merit. We need to see a little spirit and some attitude as right. well. These with two of them, two of the competitors know you, you know, mm -hmm. intimately. Yeah. Romantically, even, perhaps. <laughs> and uh, Bill Cott and Jeff Richards, yeah, master I would, impressionist. I would, be say, to see how this I would say when you call Very somebody serious. and say, you got to get to my office and remove the fecal matter from my partner's desk, you have a relationship with that. Right. You know what I mean? That means you guys go back. You wouldn't just do that with a stranger. Now, are we going to bet on this at all? Who? I guess we have to now that you brought it up on the air. <laughs> I suppose so, yes. I wasn't planning on it, but uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, you want to, uh, but we're also going to judge. So it's going to oh, be tough to bet That's and judge. You're going to tend to want to yes. go for the guy you put your money well, with. Well, you, yeah, you can't, it's hard for you to judge. Are you going to judge your people who do you the best? That seems tough. Let's just wait till tomorrow.
do this. <laughs> we obviously did not out. hash out. <laughs> Is Brett Michael still here? <laughs> Get him back in here. I think we'll all just decide all right. who the winner is. All right. All right. Enough. I think I can I can judge. What's the winner get? <sighs> you guys didn't Brasco, what do you got over there? You got something for Hooters got, or I something? A, I got a three dollar gift certificate from Hooters. Three dollars. <laughs> uh, my my bet, by the way, is with Sal. Uh, I think uh, I've heard a little bit of them, and oh, come on. quite fun. You got the money with Sal. Yeah. All right. And Sal's what do you get? Do they get? Can we get a couple hundred bucks over yeah, at Hooters? We're going to give them a hundred bucks. hundred bucks for Hooters. Okay, bucks. Sal, have you bucks. had chicken wings before? I have not. I have okay, not. well, this is going to be a treat for you, then. I'll, I'll play for Ray's defecation. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I'm easy to please. Okay, also, uh, all right, so there we have Sal, we have Ray, we have Bill, we have Jeff. Let's just, uh, let's start off with Bill Cott. Let's uh, get started. Now, again, he will be reading... Uh, an analogy. This is that, a compulsory. Uh, an actual compulsory. These are words that, that actually came out of your mouth, right? That's right. Again, and read the top, too, so there's a context. Okay. All right, we're ready? The following is Adam on being an atheist. Here's the thing about being an atheist. It's really like you're being a referee in a game you're not playing in. You're not on this team. You're not on that team. You don't really care who wins. You're just hanging out and making sure a fight doesn't break out. Mm. And also, everyone hates you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I jumped in there. You know, you know, I don't remember the part about everyone hating me. <laughs> I had to add that. Wow. There were some hints of Nicholson in there. Yeah. Did you catch uh -huh. that? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It was, uh, it was solid, but uh, I still, still like to hear what the other competitors have to offer. Uh, let's go, uh, Ray. You ready, Ray? You poised? Yeah. Into the mic, please. <laughs> First of all, I'd like to say um, I was at the bathroom earlier, so my performance might be a little inhibited because I witnessed Jeff puking. Oh, this isn't, this is out of line. <laughs> oh, wow. That true, nervous. True. Different I, I athletes prepare shot. in different ways. Could That's be all. an eating disorder. I had, uh, <laughs> I drank a little tequila last night. <laughs> really? Did you? <laughs> it had to come out. Uh, did yeah. he really heat? Yeah, yeah. twice. <laughs> it was, it was like, it wow. was like, um, crank anchors. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Why is it and like I caught the shoes because it was, it was just, oh, so. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's like if I drink tequila, it's like just enough time goes by mm -hmm. to where I, I forget that I shouldn't drink tequila, mm -hmm. you know, so it's like it has to get out of me, so. Then were you out celebrating last night or just somebody bought, I would have a problem the, with alcohol. No, <laughs> I did the improv <laughs> no, couldn't and be that. I got a couple, okay. couple free shots. So. Okay. All right. But the point is, is you, you brought your game face, you're ready to go. No, cheap up. shot really. by Ray, putting down the I competition. Know. I'm putting down. All right. Just, hey, it's a fact. Well, now it's time to put up, Ray. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. This is Adam if he's intimidated on taking Howard Stern's place. If, all right, be, be more clear on that just to make sure. Adam, if he's intimidated by taking Howard Ter Stern's place. Thank you for Much that better. clarity. That yeah. didn't sound like Carol. the same way. All right. <laughs> this is the line. Sure, it's intimidating, but you'd be an idiot not to do it. It's no, like this. Questions. Start doing I, your impression. I stop this. this is he going to do, do it? Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> what did I tell you yesterday, Prasca? This is all I do. All right, all right, all right. Sure, it's intimidating, but I'd be an idiot not to do it. It's like this. If Jennifer Aniston wanted to get it on with you, sure, she was with Brad Pitt. Sure, you're never going to look that good with your shirt off. Sure, you can't compete with him, but you'd be an idiot if you didn't jump on it. That was like Ray reading a card. That's, the <laughs> That's what I was no, doing. No, no. No, he, well, he made a little effort there. He got a little effort in there. Uh, wasn't a good effort. But <laughs> yeah. Roscoe, you know, we talked about having Ray in here for the last week. <laughs> if you think Ray did a bad job, you should fire yourself right now. <laughs> Told you he was a jackass. All right, well, the competition is limp. <laughs> the table is set. Our salvation is supposed to be the tequila drunk Jeff Richards here. <laughs> well, let's hear from the aforementioned right. Jeff Richards. All right. Adam, on what his role was on Loveline. It, it when when you want your dog to take a heartworm pill and, and you just hand it to him and he spits it out, but but if you mash it into some Gaines burger, oh yeah, that's good Gaines burger. <laughs> it just laps it up. Look at Drew as the heartworm pill and me as the Gaines burger. Little Ross Perot in there. <laughs> yeah, a little Southern drawl, but otherwise I'm warming I, I like up. That. I'm warming yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> Still drunk. <laughs> All right. Well, Sal. Right. The uh, the world is your uh, Adam Oyster here. I, I think there's some competition, but I think it's definitely up for grabs. All right, let me Cousin give it a uh, right. This is Adam on the radio sensor hitting the dump button when no profanity was used. 
Yeah, you can't blame the guy. His his adrenaline's pumping and he has an itchy trigger finger. It's like in those seventies cop movies when the cops are shooting on that obstacle course. Every once in a while the lady holding a cell phone pops up from behind the doorway and a cop blows her head off. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I like that one. I like Sal too. So he's got better material though than mine. <laughs> well what <laughs> So it all Gainsburger. <laughs> all right, that's not your best work. Okay, listen, we're not we're not here to critique my analogies. Yeah, that's not going to help. We're you here to judging. do me critiquing my analogies. All right, let's take a break. We will uh, now. That's the compulsory part. Right. Well, that's we only half the our, score. We have to levy our judgments too. Yeah, but that's only half the score. Right. Now, now the freestyle begins. That's when people <laughs> call in and we play a spirited round of what can't Adam complain about with your phone calls. And uh, our four Adams over here. Call in 866-901-ADAM. We'll be right back after this. It's the Adam Carolla Show. Call Adam Carolla now. 866-901-ADAM. All right. Now we have a uh, full boat of uh, what can Adam complain about. But this is, this is not the real Adam. This is the uh, fembot version of the Ace Man. Ray is in here. Good old buddy. Known Ray since the fourth grade. Cousin Sal, dear, dear friend, Cousin Sal. I remember meeting Cousin Sal when he picked me and Jimmy up from uh, New York. He lived out in Long Island. Jimmy and I flew out about 10, 12 years ago. And I was amazed that Sal could not find his way from JFK back to the home he grew up in. You ever think maybe I was screwing with you? (laughs) For the first two hours, I thought maybe he's screwing with me. But uh, when eventually we almost <laughs> ran out of gas and then almost clipped that car yeah. in the driving rain and then you drove, drove over the center medium strip there. And weird. I thought it eventually, now I think he's serious about not being able to find his house. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought for a second, well, I couldn't find his house either. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, I wasn't born here. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's Cousin Sal, the One Magellan of, best, of the group. Uh, gas days ever, by the way. Right? <laughs> yes, uh, that happened. Right. So I lost out in the end. The, yes, the only redemption was me parting up Sal's mom's Malibu from JFK. We could have really just driven out from L.A. would have taken less time. Cousin Sal and... That's what uh, I call an ass half full. Bill, uh, Bill Cott. Thank you. I call them impressionist extraordinaire, but I'm going to go ahead and downgrade that after hearing his <laughs> version of me moments ago. Jeff Richards. In my defense, I just want to say, yes. it sounded a lot like Nackle. Oh, I <laughs> oh. We got beat for that. We we beat we beat the man on a technicality with they that one. Like that All right. Anyway, and Jeff Richards, dear dear friend of the show, formerly of Saturday Night Live. Uh, I'll tell you, it's a mixed bag. But the point is, is that was o- that's only half the grade. That's Varying the compulsory of part. So yes. Far. Now we go to the freestyle competition. You must be lucid and fast on your feet here, people, because people are going to call up. They're going to throw a topic out. We're going to do what can Adam complain about, and you will be Adam. I say we go in reverse order here. Yeah, here's the thing. Also, you have to complain, obviously, is the bit. Mm-hmm. You have to complain about uh, thing, whatever yeah. topic they toss you out to you. Then. That's right. Does a decent brusca. Sounds a little like complain. Brandon. That to a, uh, booty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a great show. A lot of uh, fun. <laughs> yeah. You got to hit it down the hooters, I think. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> when's the brusca <laughs> off? <laughs> All right. Nine Let's o'clock get... hour. Let's... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Start with Cousin Sal. Is right. Adam Carolla? Joe? Yes. Give Sal the topic that he can complain about. Uh oh. The word uh oh? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's the windmill. Windmills. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, windmills. You know, the thing about windmills, you're driving to Palm Springs and the windmills are, they're, ter- they're, they're waving around. You know, Brusca, why are you waving your arms around right now? <laughs> what, you're you're, like, guess, you're like a windmill yourself. You're, you're like guiding a Boeing 747 onto the tarp, and I'm trying to complain about Well, all right, just say so. In studio, we have legendary Academy Award-winning actor, <laughs> the great Robert De Niro. Robert De Niro, everybody. And, uh, uh, of course, when you, think, when you think about Robert De Niro, you can't help to think of 
Goodfellas, a, a movie I've seen about 10,000 times. I, I love that goddamn movie. I'll tell you, if my son were boxing for the heavyweight <laughs> championship of the world on HBO and Showtime was playing Goodfellas, I, I choose to watch Bobby D and the boys stomp Billy Bats to death one more time. I, and speaking of boxing, why do you never see boxing on George Michael's sports machine? Well, that's true. Okay. <laughs> what, what does George Michael have against the sport? Well, God damn it, I'm right. <laughs> Did his great 22 uncle. hours of Bronco busting a NASCAR, not one ounce of boxing. And still not a peep out of Bob De Niro. <laughs> yes. Did his great uncle choke to death on a mouthpiece or something? And while we're on the subject of George Michael, what about the other George Michael? Can you come up with a gayer name for a band than Wham? <laughs> you could call yourself the pickle-loving Cornhole Brigade, and it wouldn't sound as gay. <laughs> All right, we're out of time. I'd like to thank the great Robert De Niro for stopping by. Wow. We'll be, back. we'll be back to weigh Big Tad. Cleverly done. Ingenious. Yes. Ingenious, knowing that I'm tangential, and I hop around just a little bit. Thank you. Prepared for that. I wasn't... Uh... Wasn't his topic windmills? <laughs> Get in there with that. That 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 was uh, his emphasis, but his major was Adam Carolla, and I think he got an A. Masterfully on that handled, yes. Yeah, nice job. <laughs> Whew, the bar's high. All right, now that would be uh, who would go next there, Jeff? Would you be Would you be second here? Sure. You ready with your brusca? <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> Get some more coffee for the people. Now I'm not going to go. I'm not. I'm not going to go in order here, so you guys can't pre-prepare. Here is Tara from Seattle. Tara. Yeah. Um. How about pre Brad Pitt? What's up, Billy Bob Thornton? Mm-hmm. Angelina Jolie. Angelina body. Jolie. How can I not complain? Or how can I complain about Angelina Jolie? <clears throat> Everybody makes a big hype over Angelina Jolie, and she's a beautiful actress, and uh, enjoy her movies, and everything's great with that and everything. But here's the thing. If you look like a monkey, and and, and, and you want to wear a prom dress out to the... Uh, oh boy, let me just read a commercial. Uh, new Quiznos. New hot roasted turkey panino. Quiznos slice slice thin roast beef they put on there all nice and good. Then they put the melted mozzarella cheese all good there like that. Then they don't put the ranch dressing on the bread. Oh no, that would kill the toast. (laughs) You don't want to kill the toast effect. You got to put it in the middle there between the cheese and the lettuce. (laughs) Press it all down there and uh, only at Quiznos. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Another very, very strong performance. Say, I have to say, it came out of the gate with a bit of a stumble there. But, right. uh, but really, think? came on strong with the quiz. <laughs> I I stumbled? Dynamite. Oh, my God. Nice Go back job. to the brusca. <laughs> All right. Now, I believe we started then uh, with Ray, so he'll go last. Is it uh, Bill Cott? No, we started with Cott. No. We started with Cott, and then Ray went. So it's time for Ray to uh, step up to the plate. All right, Ray, what can Adam complain about? <laughs> Let's uh, go to line eight over here. Sherry? Uh, yes. You uh, have a topic? Yes, I do. How about Elvis Presley? Elvis Presley. How about less medication? <laughs> Listen, here's the thing about Elvis. You got to love Elvis at a level, but, you know, on the later years, jumpsuit, whole thing, what the hell was that about? And the drugs. I love Elvis, true, but I kind of hate him on the same token. This is the worst brusque I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Listen, here's the thing. I like Elvis. You might not. By the way, I invented the Recycler Roller. Wow. All right. Okay. Again, Ray, not not a professional. He's a green. Yes, he's a greenhorn with a brown hand. All right. Now it is time for Bill Cott, a seasoned veteran, a man who does many voices. Uh, mine way not to, included way, way in that up, resume, Way to set evidently. me up for failure. Yeah, Thank sorry. you. You're feeling the good? Anchor position. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling great. To me, swing for the fences. I, I yeah. feel like, yeah, and here's 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 yeah. your, your shot here. Right. Do not choke up. Don't I try can't. to poke one up the middle or go for Texas Leaguer. Just take a big big mm-hmm. swing. Either knock it out of the park or you head back to the dugout. But either way, Send you got to swing way. for the fences. <laughs> All right, here we go. Line six. Oh, wait a minute. Went the wrong way. Line six, Anthony. Yeah. You have a topic. I do. Let's about, hear it. 
How about the beauty and softness of good toilet paper? Soft toilet paper. You know something, when, when I sit down at a toilet, I spend half my time reading the Newsweek, uh, getting caught up with the perspective section. I probably do better wiping myself with that than the sweet cottony goodness of Cottonelle. I mean, the last thing I want brushing up against my short and curlies <laughs> is something that makes me feel like I'm sitting in an easy chair. And while I'm going to leave some of it behind, I'll have to scrape it off three days later in the shower. <laughs> wow. Strong. It's oh. a strong effort. He stuck with the Nicholson thing, and, and if unless my ear was mistaken, was there some Woody Allen in there? Could have been, yeah. 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 Material well, strong. Though. There was a little wood sporting. <clears throat> you guys uh, all did a uh, yeoman-like job on this. It's uh, sad that you can't all be winners. Actually, anyone who has 100 bucks is a winner. Just take it down to Hooters, and uh, you'll be on the same par with whoever does get that gift certificate. That is the gift, $100 over at over at uh, Hooters. We got a gift certificate. Well, Dave Damashek, how say you? Well, I've added it up. I did the compulsory score combined, obviously, with the uh, freestyle. I'm going to go in order uh, with uh, who went first there. Bill Cott, a nice job, 16.9 combined score. Mm. Uh huh. Ray, mm -hmm. <laughs> four. <laughs> <laughs> Low score wins. No, it means why'd we what'd we bring you in here for? <laughs> not, not for the numbers. What the hell the was Prosca thinking? Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah, we should have went with three, yeah. Jeff. Mm -hmm. Seven point eight, and I threw in a couple extra bonus points, even though it may not be fair for the for the fine job with Brusca. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bill Cott gets a sixteen and change, and Jeff only gets a seven. Seventeen point eight. Oh, seventeen yes. Yes. point eight. Oh, okay. So he's ahead of uh, Bill. Sal. On the strength of his 10.0 perfect score wow. in, the, in the freestyle, 18.1. Wow. Hey, nice I'll job. I'll take that. All right. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, that may be the first perfect score in the history of the Corolla. off <laughs> I, th I think so, yeah. Uh, Claudia, how say you? I got to go from worst to best. Ray, sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bill, Jeff, and Sal. Oh, thank mm -hmm. you. You were great. This is going to work out. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Um, so even if I don't vote for Sal at this point, it would be uh, two out of three. Well, yeah, again, we didn't really work out our scoring system. <laughs> right. again, so. It's your show. You have the final yeah, say. Yeah, let's just yeah. say mine counts for a thousand, and these guys count for next to nothing. <laughs> well, well, I will uh, go in reverse order as well. Uh, Ray, sorry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> but that's all right. You know tile and stucco. You were the crap in this uh, in the desk of this bit. <laughs> that's right. Obviously. <laughs> I hope your office is locked. Bill. <laughs> I'm only, Bill, I'm going to I'm going to give you a third place uh tough love because I know what a yeah. pro you at, you are and how talented you actually are. I didn't feel like you right. nailed it, but uh, again, this is based on how good I actually think you are or were. As it were. <laughs> Jeff, you came in here. You barfed in the ladies' room. Yes, it was the ladies' room. <laughs> you can't hold your booze, but uh, none of these guys can hold a uh, candle to your uh, to your talent. Nice job being hungover. I'll put you into uh, second place. And Cousin sweet. Sal. Oh. Cousin Sal, you did a wonderful job. You brought it. And uh, like I said, in the freestyle competition, it was a, it was ingenious. I never thought about going on the tangential ra rants that I normally go on. It, it was a dangerous play, too. Mm -hmm. The judges mm -hmm. might not have responded to something like that, going off page like that. Right. It worked out. For Thank you. Thank All you right. very much. All right. So, I'll take everyone to Hooters. What the hell do I care? So <laughs> give him the, uh, yeah. give him the yeah. gift I would like a rematch. <laughs> Only because it was so close, I would like a rematch at some point. <laughs> Well, yeah, I'd like to be able to write something down for the freestyle Because, you know, he time. read a right. lot. <laughs> well, look. Well, you this. lifted a Quiznos commercial right from the air. Well. <laughs> we'll do the Brasco right. off next. <laughs> All right. Very good. You'll be the odds-on favorite for that. Guys, thank you very much. All right. We will uh, take ourselves a break. Jim Gaffigan. The comedian's comedian, Jim Gaffigan, in next after this. Hey, this is Richard Jenny. You're listening to the Adam Carolla Show, the greatest show on radio. And I'm not just saying that. I'm being paid a handsome fee to say that. Speaking of comedians, Jim Gaffigan in studio. Oh, that guy's funny. Yeah, he's he is the comedian's comedian. I, yeah. Uh, Beyond the Pale, name of his uh, latest comedy DVD. I was going to say CD, but it's a DVD. 
It's it's both. It's both. Where did you record it? Uh, at uh, the uh, Vic in Chicago, a beautiful theater. Are you? It, it strikes me. It seems like you may be from the Midwest. Yeah, I'm very white bread. Very yeah. white bread. You're clear bread. I am clear bread. <laughs> yeah. I'm very pale. You're white bread with the crust cut off. I'm very, very pale. Half yeah. polar bear. <laughs> half. <laughs> half polar bear. So well, three quarter. The other half. Uh, my mother was Elton John. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Thought you may have been Tom Petty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be making jokes about you you not being able to go in the sun. It's a scary thing. <clears throat> Jim, uh, as I was uh, looking down, I uh, see him most recently, uh, well, on Comedy Central all the time and all that, but uh, see you all the time on the Sierra Mist spots. Yeah. And uh forgot you're the Rolling Rock guy. Yes, I was. I only do I only uh, do those commercials because I love the product. Mm -hmm. The money is, you know, it's nice, but I really care and love Sierra Mist. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not just bringing up Sierra Mist because I get money mm -hmm. if I bring up Sierra Mist. Oh, really? No, I do those commercials because I feel like it's important. Which For which product? Uh, it's Sierra Mist. Okay. Uh, Man, am I know. thirsty? I could go for a Sierra Mist. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm, here to plug things like no. my website, jimgaffigan.com, mm -hmm. <laughs> or my MySpace <laughs> slash Jim Gaffigan. That's mm -hmm. not why I'm here. I'm right. here because I'm running for senator, mm. and I think <laughs> I can do some good things for uh, states like Arizona, where I'll be uh, at the Celebrity Theater on April 29th. You'll be 29th. performing there on the 29th. I, I, you know, I just mm -hmm. I don't know what brought that up. but Well, uh, I, I got to say, I, I do appreciate <laughs> your, your candor and your attitude, mm -hmm. because a lot of guys come on here... And, and they're they not fans you. of mine. They're not fans of the radio, and they're not fans right. of the fans. They use me like some sort of prostitute, as some sort of springboard to just launch, you know, give, their, give themselves a plug for the uh, DVD, Beyond the Pale, released Sick in now. February 2006, yeah. also with the accompanying CD, or a plug to where they may be performing yeah. or product they're pitching. Yeah, see, that's why, you know, I mean, I've been a fan of you since the man show, Jimmy. And I have always, you know, we've been buddies. We did the uh, modern dance class together, the hip hop class, the hula class. That, that was Jimmy. I'm Adam from the man. Yeah, show. no, I was. That was. Yeah. Yeah. OK, okay. sure. Yeah. Right. But I, I was fan. doing that as kind of a, a thing where, you know, our nicknames, we call each other. I call you Jimmy and you call me uh, Jim Gaffigan dot com. I see. <laughs> well, speaking of Jimmy, I do remember uh, I used to call, um, let's see, what? oh, yes, I, I would call Mountain Dew Nectar of the Tards over yes. the air uh, many times <laughs> until they got very angry at me. One of my program directors yelled at me on an airplane once. Well, it's a long story. But the point is, is I would say I hated Mountain Dew and I've just I pretty much figured, well, only stupid people drink Mountain Dew and uh, perhaps also had a bigger plan if they'd put some sort of sterilization agent into Mountain Dew and possibly horchata, we could clean up this city in a matter matter of months, you know what I mean? Because we don't need these people reproducing. But my point is, is a uh, few, for some reason, three years later, Mountain Dew came to me and said, we'll give you, I don't remember what it was, 25 grand to do one commercial spot. And I said, count me in. Yeah. And Kimmel made fun of me. He called me a sellout. And I said, who's the joke on? <laughs> Think about it. It's, so, it's all about art. Really. That, that's what that's what I said. It's you know when you're an artist, when you live like an artist, doing Sierra Mist yes. commercials. I came I came or, down from my Soho loft. I took off my beret. Mm -hmm. I had to hit off my non-filter cigarette, and I said, "Show me the money." Well, I think it's so funny because you know I have friends that are like, you know, you do all these commercials, and I'm like, uh, well, that's interesting because you're temping at a right. subsidiary of Pepsi. I'd yeah. rather get bigger money. <laughs> yeah. They're like, uh, they're like, Jim, man. Oh, first off, uh, good to see you again. But Jim, I can't believe you're selling your soul to the devil. And you're like, yeah, I'll try one of those stuffed mushrooms. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> there are the people that are like, I'm really against Fox News. I hate Fox News. I'll be, uh, be appearing on the drama The OC, which is on the Fox Network. Yeah. No, they're jealous. <laughs> they're jealous of what we have. Yeah, and yeah, our, but and here's the thing, and, and if you stop me, but here's how I am. I will do these things, sure, I'll sell yeah. my soul to make the money to support my art, 
which is watching TiVo and masturbating. Yeah. You know Mine, what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I've watched you do that, and you, mm-hmm. that is an art. Yeah. Well, next time, don't have. come over unannounced. That's all. <laughs> I love that sound effect. That's something. <laughs> Maybe that we goes good with the coffee Combine the it with the uh, cha-ching, and then I think we really got some. There you go. <laughs> Hence the money shot. Jim Gaffigan in studio. Oh, thank you, Mike. Saddle Very down. pleased with himself <laughs> this morning. <laughs> He's beaming. Well, extra coffee this morning. <laughs> no kidding. All right, Jim Gaffigan uh, here. You're going to hang with us. Yes. We, uh, we're going to do ourselves uh, some news, some sports. I think we're going to do some uh, hypothetical question with you, too. All right. You, uh, you, there's no wrong answers in there's, hypothetical It's hypothetical. Question. That's right. All right. That after this. Hey, it's the Adam Corolla Show. I'm drunk. Call Adam Corolla now at 866-901-ADAM. Mm-hmm. All right. Jim Gaffigan in studio. Beyond the Pale. Name of his DVD out as we speak. Also, CD. Um, we spoke about playing a little hypothetical question oh. with Jim. We also spoke about him hanging out, doing the uh, news and sports. Well, I don't know why I have to be naked, but just right. it's how the game is played. Okay, all right. Okay. It's not wasn't my idea. And what do I do with this jelly? Just apply it. All right, like Brusca right. told right. you. Okay, all right. <laughs> or showed you. <laughs> you good? Yeah, this is good. This is a little sticky. No, but no. It, but it, but what it, is it, that it, strawberry? Yeah. Okay. Well, you can get down that low. Yeah. It's pretty good. <laughs> it's sugar free. And stay on the mic. It's amazing. Yeah. All right. So uh, you're going to do some sports and some news with us. But uh, first, we decided to play some hypothetical question. And again, there are no wrong answers right. to this. This is all up to you. We all win. Right. This is a uh, <laughs> this is a hypothetical drive across country mm-hmm. with one or two folks in your car, and you tell me which one you would rather okay. drive with. All right. I'm a little nervous. All right. Here's uh, number one. <laughs> who would you rather drive cross country with? The guy who has the great idea for the TV show, but then says he can't tell you what it is. <laughs> that a-hole who brings it up, by the way. It's yeah. not like you stopped him and said, hey, do you have any ideas for TV shows? Dude, he brings I, I it up. T- I can't and then tell you. when you politely tell you. say... Well, what is it? Just because you want to let him think you're listening or paying attention, he explains he can't really tell you right now. (laughs) That a-hole or the blowhard sober guy? A little motivational speaking, huge calves, ponytail? Uh, Yeah, I'd have to go for the guy that has the great idea. Sorry. (laughs) You said there was no wrong answer. uh, There hadn't been up until that one. Oh, jeez. All right, yeah. No, you don't want that guy. The blowhard... The blowhard ponytail guy, that's the guy you want to go with there. The ponytail is, yeah, that's, it's always, you know, I've, I, I'm, part of me is jealous because I don't have enough hair for the ponytail, but. Well, neither does this guy, though. He's, he's bald yeah. on top and has the salt and pepper ponytail with the mustache. I was in Albany last weekend, and I think that's where they're making the guys with the ponytail. Oh, really? That's, <laughs> well, we yeah. must carpet, There's a lot of we people got to carpet there. bomb them immediately. <laughs> it's calling a strike. Did you get any coordinates? <laughs> it was, it was. Uh, it was a magical place. It was like, you know, signing uh, CDs and people, ponytail, ponytail, a kid with a ponytail. What a is that? Uh, when it's like, you know, the guys that have the multiple earrings and the guys that have the ponytails and the chicks that have the greasy bangs, that sort of cholo look and the crazy yeah. nappy hair. My thing is, where did you see this look? You know, did you turn on entertainment tonight and see that J-Lo or Jennifer Aniston was sporting the crazy, greasy bang hair? And if you didn't see it there, then why are you doing it? I, I think it's I think a lot of it has to be uh, laziness. I know for me, it's like it's kind of like, you know, you start wearing that pair of jeans and then two weeks later, you're like, well, I'll just stick with these jeans. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's already got a belt in it. But some some of these guys with the ponytails and the mullets and the chicks with the greasy bangs and all, it seems like more effort than just letting it hang naturally, you know? Yeah. Okay. So you're 0 for 1. Let's keep moving. All right. All right. right. You're driving cross country with uh, one of these two guys. This is the uh, hipster guy with the leather wristband. 
No oh, yeah. watch on okay. it. Just a leather yeah. wristband on one side, like he's half a muscle man from the turn of the century. Yeah. He, and he weighs like 80 pounds. He weighs yeah. 80 pounds, but yeah. he has a big leather yeah. wristband. He, and by the way, it's not because he's into falconry or anything. <laughs> There's no purpose for this thing. He just has a stupid leather wristband. Yeah. That guy or the guy with the Sturges t-shirt. I don't even know what a Sturgis T-shirt well, is. Well, it's a it's it's a uh, it's a biker rally they have oh, uh, once a year. It could be the same guy though, couldn't it? Mm, one guy is the Hollywood hipster, and the other yeah. other guy is a little more the, the biker real deal. type. Yeah, the real deal. Ooh, the real deal. I, I I think I'm gonna have to go with the Hollywood hipster. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm starting to think that you're just saying no. I'm doing it wrong, no matter what. We got to keep moving. <laughs> Hasidic Jew. Or, or a rabid NASCAR fan? Uh, Hasidic Jew, definitely. Sorry. Why so? <laughs> What's that? Why so? Yeah. Fascinating. I'm just, you know, I'm kind of like a, a Midwestern white bread uh, nerdy guy. I would love to, you know, ask questions and, you mm -hmm. know, see a little bit. You know, people that have that much faith, they always have a little bit of a dark side. Interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. But so. you gotta think. You gotta think of the. Uh, let me. Let me tell you. Nothing. Nothing against our uh, Hasidim friends and brothers, but those people yeah. stink. They do. Uh, the whole thing is they got a beard like ZZ Top. They got hair down well, to they here. They have to wear the coat. They too. wear the black everything. There's dandruff all over the coat. They never shower. <laughs> they sit around eating all day with a cardboard box taped to their head. <laughs> You don't want to deal with those people. As opposed to the to the average NASCAR <laughs> fan. The it NASCAR smells like guy's going to be really <laughs> Mr. Clean or something. Yeah, it, it is a sort of battle, the funk in there, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's let's uh, let's keep moving, see if we can uh, Yeah, the NASCAR guy here. I grew up with, so yeah, it's yeah. like, that's, that's not You want to broaden funny. your horizons a yeah. little. All right, chick who wears the unicorn painted on the fingernails. Long fingernails Ooh. with like an airbrushed <laughs> unicorn <laughs> on there. Or... The angry goth teenager. The unicorns, I'm going to go with that um, because I think there's a greater likelihood that she, um, you know, I think there's some dark side to her, too. Mm -hmm. And the, the goth girl, I feel like she's trying to be uh, rebellious. Right. And you never know what you're going to say to piss off a goth girl. I agree, but I'm sorry. That's really... See, that just seemed what the dickens I, I'm with you work? I'm with you on this one I wish it were uh, I wish it was something other than what we just had alright last one the unicorn girl could also you know that's the type of woman that you'll be talking to and it'll just be suddenly revealed that she's a stripper yeah you know it's yeah. just like yeah hey so anyway and she's like alright I am a stripper and you're like you're you're fascinating yeah you put a pole right in the car and go to town <laughs> All right, last one. You ready? Yes. Pierced nipple guy, the guy who not only pierces the nipples, but then walks around with the shirt off all the time, so you're yeah. fo forced to focus on his nipple like a bass seeing something shiny yeah. in the pond. You know, he's yeah. just, hey, I got to check that guy's nipples. Uh, everyone, hey, everyone, look at my nipples. <laughs> it's a weird thing. Like, hey, I'm going to pierce my, I'll put something shiny and bright for my nipple, then I'll take my shirt off, and then I'll go hang out with dudes, and you can all focus on my areolas. <laughs> yeah. It's great. Boy, well, what I love a sexual it. charge. Wait a minute. Okay. Or the guy who gets the motorcycle at the police auction wears the black and white two-tone helmet and essentially poses as a motor cop. The guy drives behind you, and from your goddamn rearview mirror, you think a cop is behind you because he's driving the black and white Moto Guzzi. <laughs> I would say I'm going to go with the uh, the guy that has his shirt off and the nipple. Because, I'm, I'm sorry. Because you know that guy's on MySpace. Oh, yeah. you know, you know, there's always the MySpace photo of the guy with the shirt off who's just like, oh, you know what? I'll just have my uh, photo be me with my shirt off. Yeah. Adam, yeah. Gaffigan has pierced nipples. Oh, I this is uncomfortable. I have a chain connecting them, too. <laughs> oh. Which is, you know, but the ladies like it. And he rode in on a 900 and Kawasaki have, with uh, I police have little stripes beads on where it. You could, you could, you could do right, some math on there, too. Let's, let's not do the beads, please. Steve has a question. Steve? Yep. Hey, Adam. You got a question? Yeah, I want to know the uh, specs on your Recyclerola. The Recyclerola. The Recyclerola is something uh, I invented. Is that your phone going off, Bruska? Oh, Gaffigan's phone. That's probably uh, Spielberg. That's yeah. an attack. 
It's your agent telling you to pick up the energy a little bit. <laughs> hey, I didn't say it. E <laughs> That's the You're not Mr. High Energy. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. Quailu <laughs> Joe. <laughs> Um, what the hell are we talking about? We, oh, yeah, yeah. Recycla, Recyclorama. Recyclorola. That's a, I didn't name it. Kimmel yeah. did. Um, it struck me that uh, I do a fair amount of... Uh, I, I recycle. I'm big into recycling. All right, bragger. And I, I do a fair amount of uh, you know beer drinking and soda drinking and wine drinking. Yeah. And at the end of the week, the bottles and cans and whatnot yeah. are piled up in a pyramid on my kitchen counter. And I realize I don't do it one at a time. Like you finish off a beer or a Pepsi, you don't walk the can out to the recycling bucket. You just pile it up and it right. gathers, gathers roaches on the counter. I came up with a chute at my house. The right. Recyclerola. I open a little flap, fire it down the chute, goes right into the recycling bucket. That's that's impressive. You know, whenever I do the uh, soda, my wife's always like, did you wash out that soda can? And I'm like, I haven't even showered today. <laughs> Don't worry. Maybe I should clean myself before I start washing the garbage. You're on week number three of those jeans. You're not going to be scrubbing <laughs> the inside of a Mountain Dew can. You know, I'm exerting too much energy. All right, I'm right sorry. <laughs> Listen, that, that was, a, it was a cheap <laughs> shot. My point is, my point is this. You all you got to do is get a three inch piece of ABS pipe or PVC right. pipe, just right. plastic pipe. Right. Now the three inch stuff will accommodate a wine bo wine bottle, soda <laughs> bottle, beer can, beer bottle. It'll take it all. Do that. Put it in your kitchen. Right. Usually you'll be up above the grade a little bit. Your kitchen, if you think about yeah. it, it'll be a couple feet above the grade. You put one of those little yeah. recycling buckets down on the end of it. Right. Drill a hole right through the stucco. Have it stubbed out inside yeah. a cabinet. Put a little flap there so no rodents or wind gets in. And then have fun just firing away those beer bottles right out right. the recycler roll. And it'll go well with, it sounds like, if you're doing something like that, it sounds like you might have like a, an old couch in your yard. It sounds kind of like a little <laughs> bit, you know, like that abandoned refrigerator. The ultimate white trash move. I got a, I got a sofa up on blocks. <laughs> wow. A Gaffigan. Uh, who would you rather drive across the country with? The guy with the pierced nipples who takes his shirt yeah. off or the guy who tells you about his insane inventions? Like the Recyclerola. I think the, I, I think the Recyclerola. Uh, Wait a minute. Oh, I think he was wow. right on that one. How dare you? Thank you. All right, Steve, you got your specs there? Yeah, how do you, I want to know how you spell it, too. Oh, boy. you got to ask Kimmel on that one. However, whatever, re take recycle and a roll and put it at the end of it. I'll fig right. you figure it out. All yeah. right, buddy boy. Good times. Now, uh, Jim, hang out. We're going to do the uh, news. We're going to do the sports, and we'll start with the news. Sitting in for Rachel Perry, the beautiful Claudia DeFalco. <laughs> Kidnapped U.S. reporter Jill Carroll has been released in Iraq after nearly three months in captivity. After she spoke to her father, she was reported in good condition. In entertainment news, last night on American Idol, Lisa was eliminated. How do you feel looking back at this trip? You know, this has been the experience of a lifetime, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. I would not be as cordial, by the way, if I just got <laughs> tossed off. Listen, you half a fact. First off, I, I, I put so much C4 into this building, no one's getting out. I'll see you all in hell. I've, I have the detonator in my bra. Now I have a list of demands. <laughs> Simon can't be taking this too well. Paul Abdul has signed on for three more years with American Idol. And thanks to Ryan I can't believe that artist is not going to be performing for another three years. That, that's the real, that's the tragedy for me, you know. She's so busy doing the American Idol that she can't work her she beautiful, can't. she has a gift for music. She has a gift for, she's a cheerleader too, right? Yeah, but, but her number one <laughs> gift is, is music. I mean. We go, cat, cat. Yeah, I mean, listen to this song. I mean, you oh, want to talk about. Oh, this is my song. Up. Tell Dude, me. Talk about touch by the hand of God. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't sound dated at all. It, it's just as good now as it was in 1989. And I love, you know, they really kind of manufacture the the conflict with those guys, don't you think? Because yes. you know that after the show, they're like sitting there going, can you believe we're getting paid to do this? I know getting paid to pass judgment, something I do for free all day. Yeah. Tough. That's Jeff, tough. Uh, Jim, would you take a road trip with Paul Abdul or Randy? Uh, I think. Uh, um, and she's singing during this trip. Straight up. I could wear headphones. I uh, <laughs> no, I think it would be fascinating. But how about how about the two hundred and sixty fifth time Randy called you dog? 
Hey, dog. <laughs> and you're not hey, even dog. into Nevada yet. Let's go to the dog pound. He's, you know, he looks very thin. I've only seen the show once, and oh, I really? say that with complete pride. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, no, it's pretty, it seems just odd how they just uh, pass judgment on, it's it's like they say positive things, and then they'll just start ripping into people. Like, they literally have to rip into a couple people. Right. But they're all, all the singing, not that I'm a music expert, is it's it's musical theater, right? Yeah. Well, it 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 all seems sort of subpar to me, and I cannot figure out the uh, how how it has captured the imagination of America. I mean, it, it's the number one and number two show every <laughs> single week. It's it it it, it ends up getting like thirty it's, million viewers I think each people, episode. People like because I think that like uh, when people get dung on that show or even get criticized. There, you know, people like to see that. They like to see, you know, uh, people getting, you know, turded on. All right. That is a new word, turded, right? Yes. <laughs> and thanks to Ryan Seacrest, Sherry Hatcher may not be so desperate anymore. Pictures have been published showing the two smooching mm-hmm. and turding, turding on each other. That's like a delusion no, not fest there. Right? Here's Ryan commenting to Extra about Hatcher fueling the rumor. Terry Hatcher! Oh my, Are you, oh my gosh, you're making me blush. Yeah, I'm trying to. I think she's great. <laughs> I, I, I saw her at the Grammys in that beautiful dress. We were talking earlier about <laughs> how uh, how bizarre it was to uh, see her on Vanity Fair, whatever she was on, half naked, talking about sexual abuse. It's just it's it's a weird mixed message to send to my groin. I'm staring at this woman who's wearing a cocktail napkin and showing a ton of ass cheek, and it's like I was sexually abused, and I'm like, um, well, I'm going to shed a tear and something else. Yeah. For you. <laughs> well, I'm not sure what to do. It's like the I'm going to yell at your dad or beat off one or the other. <laughs> the Ryan Seacrest thing, it's like we've actually gotten to the Thank point you. where we're uh, we're considering the celebrity reporters celebrities. It's like, how bored are we where we're just like, <laughs> right? We, we really got to demote some. There's too many celebrities. We, I agree. Know, we got to demote a couple. You're you out, know, Gaffigan. <laughs> I, I don't think I was in the and running. Take Claudia I, with you. I count you as a celebrity. That's the good news. The bad news is you're out. I'm just a journeyman. <laughs> <laughs> Kimmel uh, gave us a uh, I am, by the way, and uh, told us that Recyclarola, if you're still listening, Steve, is R E C Y C L A R O L L A. Did I get that right? That are to say, put an extra letter. Yeah, <laughs> it is only half my name. It's 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 confusing. Recyclarola. Thank you. Sorry, Claudia. And there may be trouble in paradise for Angeline and Brad. He wants to set a wedding date, which I'm sure you all be invited to. <laughs> she doesn't, and it looks like she's getting tired of his whining and misses the good old days when he was independent and masculine. <laughs> he needs to sit. You know what he needs? He needs. We're talking He's about uh, Jack Nicholson uh, earlier, right? He needs to be mm-hmm. sat down with Uncle Jack and explain the lay of the land to him. You know what I mean? Listen, there's no a guy who looks like you, a guy with your juice. You want kids? Date them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Don't get hooked up with this crazy broad. She's a, adopting half of Cambodia. It's going to. It's going to bring you down. I mean, have play the field. Have a good time. Well, Nicholson's yourself. giving classes on how to be cool. I could stand a couple of but sit downs too. It's no? like, do these no. people ever even give interviews? I almost feel like they're making up storylines. It's like, all right, well, now we're going to have you guys have a little bit of trouble. You don't have to say anything. They're like on <laughs> vacation somewhere, and they're keeping the story going so that they can <laughs> for know, the next movie release. Well, there'll be a little trouble, and then you guys will adopt yeah, another kid. I know I'm, because the picture that accompanies the statement is a blurry one of Angelina <laughs> holding a jacket over her head on a tarmac somewhere <laughs> in Indonesia. It's like she's tired of Brad being a vegetarian. Is this what she told you? Because she's, hold, she's holding her jacket over her head and running the other direction. I'm kind of over Brad and Angelina. I want Ooh. to interview the kids. Oh. Especially yeah. when they're around 12, 13. Yeah. Because he'll say, kids. Mom, I did so much. I look so cute for you to get out of Cambodia. Now you brought me back there and built a house. Right. Right? No. I mean, yes. Yes. Exactly. I don't want to drive cross country with that kid. <laughs> if that's what you're asking. But you would with Carbon Electra. She says yes. she always had a girl crush on Joan Jett. They say that there's a little bit of lesbian in all of us. Yeah. Bruska, you you want to comment on that? Having a girl crush, <laughs> by the way, on, 
Oh, no. There's a little bit of lesbian in all of us. That's new newswoman hitting yeah. it with the lesbian. Is that supposed to be a news flash? Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, Electra wants attention. If you're a girl, <laughs> if you're a girl and you have a crush on Joan Jett, that just makes you heterosexual. That doesn't make that's no girl crush. That's <laughs> yeah. a dude with a guitar. Here, it's here. like the whole Carmen Electra thing. Just wants to remind all the men out there that she's still hot. Here's a little lesbian tidbit for you. <laughs> you know, it'd be nice yeah. if we held that same power over women. Like, we were at a party, me and you, Jim Gaffigan. We, 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 and I was like, we la- did that. Ladies, gr- like gather around, Like, they would allow us Jim. in the a party. Yo, no, Jim's hot, and I start rubbing a stein, and we make out a little bit. And the guy, the chicks are like, oh, yeah, oh, dude. And they start yelling. They start, one of them runs oh, down the, the hall. the back of... Uh, yeah. They run down the hall, on, and they slide into on one of the rooms. Neck. Tammy, Connie, <laughs> Sheila, get out here! <laughs> Gaffigan and Corolla slipped each other the tongue. <laughs> oh my God! Hey, we're not <laughs> really the fantasy. I've had that fantasy forever. We're not really that into each other, but we play it up for yeah. the ladies <laughs> to sell our. Oh yeah, to sell our calendars. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> no, Jim's hot. I think he's hot. I mean, I, he's, I always he's thought sick. Adam was really sexy on the Love Line show, and. Uh, I always had some fantasies about it, and it's just neat. And we have this sort of ambiguous thing where, where it's like, well, we haven't gotten it on, but he has slept over. And we let's just say were holding we, hands we, just because we were cold. <laughs> we got under the comforter together and rolled around. Jim, assuming assuming you are gay, right? who would be your guy? My, well, Who's I your think, crush? I think it would have to be Adam Carolla. Thank you. Now your I first right you answer all morning. Because you know, wait a minute. <laughs> You're just saying that because he lets have... you plug Sierra Miss a million times. It was, you know, any guy who's low energy and um, sexy, mm-hmm. and um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I've got a thing for it, Adam Carolla. It'd be like humping a mirror. <laughs> okay. Well, maybe you'll find this guy hot. In oh, Colorado, man. a 45-year-old guy broke into homes not to steal anything, but to masturbate. Can I say that on the air? Adam, when was the last time you were in Colorado? <laughs> <laughs> My attorney said I really we should just keep moving. All right. Just keep moving. It's interesting that you bring that up because I am going to be in Phoenix at the Celebrity Theater April 29th. <laughs> wow. Um, that's not the same state, Eerie. though, is it? Yeah. No, but uh, there are Jim, only a couple always of Always use way. olive oil. Okay. Olive oil does wonders. We talked about it yesterday. Oh, yeah. So the guy got charged with two felony counts of burglary. Uh, with intent to litter because he left his seed behind. Wow. Um, Enjoy that coffee, everyone. Wow. (laughs) Jesus Christ. Littering? You left some uh, DNA? But you know what? He's just, he's kind of like a Johnny Appleseed. That's true. (laughs) Except for he's doing carpet instead of trees. Sure. I'm Clyde DeFalco and I'm done. That was some it's of the time. best news. <laughs> For Dave Damashek's number one sports. Number one sports. Do it, Dave. NBA, the days dwindled down to a precious few for those teams fighting for the last couple playoff spots. Sacramento Kings looking good for that eighth spot in the West thanks to their win over Portland last night. Seattle Seahawks head coach Mike Holmgren says he's considering hanging it up after this season. Apparently he's developed a lot of back problems from carrying around that giant mustache on his face, especially since the Super Bowl that became waterlogged from all the tears he cried that the referees cost us the game. Go blow, loser. Final yeah. four. You know, it's great. We're on in Seattle, but we're not on in Pittsburgh. So I stay it's true. a wonderful I strategy stay true to that Damashek has erected here. Yes. <laughs> Final four in just two days. Florida Gators versus George Mason. LSU against UCLA. And as I mentioned earlier, I have reached a decision. I will be watching both games. Mm. I'm going to watch them both. Wow. Big deal. And uh, bad news for Giants fans. Major League Baseball is going to investigate Barry Bonds with the steroid business. What? It's going to be headed up by uh, former U.S. Senate Majority Leader George Miss- Mitchell. The, uh, the, you know, the fuzz is coming down around him. But a defiant Barry Bonds. Do we have Gabe? Gave a press conference just a, a, about an hour wow. ago. Let's take a listen. Well, fellas, Johnny Law's got me in his sights. But hear me now and hear me well. I came by these muscles fan square. Barry Bonds don't do no dope. And any Jamuku says different's got a knuckle sandwich in their future. I ain't scared of nobody. Excuse me. Hello. Officer Sheldrake. It's Officer Sheldrake. Yes, but... Mm-hmm. 
I suppose. I'm sorry. Whatever you say. Very well. I'll turn myself in ASAP. And again, I'm sorry. Now, where was I? I was there. Uh, and nuts. I gotta go. <laughs> Barry Bonds. <laughs> what, what is gonna happen when? Because he, what? Like he's gonna break it pretty soon, right? I the mean, record. maybe not this year, but yeah. next year. And I think everyone kind of knows that he did do it. Yeah. So I mean, what what are they gonna? Is, if he's not in San Francisco when he does it, he's going to be booed. I bet you it's gonna be some <clears throat> spectacle, the greatest record in sports, and he's gonna be booed when he breaks it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Is I don't. Billy Crystal gonna do another movie? Like, you know, it's gonna be uh, another Asterix movie. It'd be nice. Yeah, it would be nice. I thought that was gonna be funny, but it wasn't really funny. The Billy Crystal thing. Oh, I thought you meant Damn Shack's bit. <laughs> <laughs> I think it goes for both. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> All right, you done? Dave Damashek's number one. I think you sport. you shame me into submission. Thank you. Very quickly, uh, Annabella, the lead singer. From Bow Wow Wow has called mm. in from Vegas. Annabella? Hey, what's up? How are you doing? <laughs> How are you doing? Doing great. We're on the road in Vegas and we're doing a show tonight at the Ice House Lounge Ooh. at 9 uh, and a reality show for Bands on the Run. Uh huh. We're being filmed and recorded as we speak to you right now this minute. Well, now, uh, I've spoke to you, I guess, a few years back on Loveline, but I had no idea you'd be calling into this show. Absolutely love you, Adam. Oh, really? Yes, of course. <laughs> wow. I'm in love. With, uh, it, for those who uh, may not remember, she was the very scantily clad uh, lead singer of just, Bow Wow Wow. Just hearing about you and Gaffigan making out with yeah. her appetite. Made her hot, huh? Yeah. You, you big Jim uh, Gaffigan fan? She doesn't know who I am. Yes, she does. No, I don't actually. Uh, okay, that's all right. I'm the host of CBS uh, Evening News. <laughs> Picture me making out with a slightly wider Michelin man. <laughs> Does that turn you on? Don't believe the hype is all I can say to that. All right, so give yourself one more plug uh, before we uh, run the commercial here, Annabella. Congratulations on your show, Adam, and uh, Dr. Drew, how is he doing? Uh, he's feeling left out. Heartbroken. Uh, so we'd love to see you guys again soon. But the show we're doing tonight is at 9 o'clock. Ice House Lounge, Las Vegas, Nevada, 650 South Main Street. And we would love for lots of people to come down. We have T-shirts. I'll be but down there personally. Yes, fire up the jet, Brusca. We'll be off directly after the show. Thank you, Annabella. So much, Adam. All right. So that's, uh, that's Las Vegas, Nevada, right? I'm guessing. Yeah. You're going to be in a neighboring city, perhaps? I'm uh, Interestingly, I'm not, but I am going to be uh, in San Diego on April 8th uh, uh -huh. at the Spreckles Theater. Spreckles. Spreckles. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we'll see you there. Uh, I'm not selling T-shirts, though. No, you're giving them away. <laughs> I'm giving them away. <laughs> Jim Gaffigan, everybody. The uh, Beyond the Pale, name of the DVD and the CD. One package. Thanks for coming by. Thanks Jim, for having me. We appreciate it. Take appreciate a break, it. and we'll be right back after this. This is Steph Mackay. Give Adam a call now at 1 866 901 Adam. Yeah. Danny. Danny Boatwright. I know where's Danny from uh, Guatemala. Survivor is uh, on the phone. We'll talk there in a second. She uh, actually beat. Our own Dave Damashek at a little sports trivia, a little college Untrue. hoop. True. She asked me one question and I failed. College hoop trivia last time she was on. And oh my God, I'm a huge uh, Survivor fan. And to watch her run around on a cargo net for an hour a week wrestling with other chicks <laughs> in nothing but short shorts was so spectacular for me. Long and lean, big pouty lips, beautiful, smoking hot. And evidently knows her college hoops, too. So we'll talk there in one second. First, uh, I want to address something. Dave and I just got back from the bathroom here. And <laughs> and it's really... it. Here's... I, I'll give I you... I think... A, I mean, he's the boss, but I have to hold it for him. It's, it's Did crosses you wash a line. your hands? It crosses a line. Well, a lot of guys like to read when they're going number two. <laughs> I like to read when I'm going number one. 
<laughs> and I need both hands free to look at my People magazine. But it's demeaning to me, Adam. Yeah, but remember the last time I tried reading and urinating and I whizzed uh, all over the potpourri? <laughs> and on my left leg. Uh, well, just hold just hold it and hold still, that's all. all. Right. My point is, is that the bathroom here, now look, I'm no civil engineer, but I, I've done the math. The toilet, by the way, is white hot from ass play. I mean, there's just, there's constantly a male ass. I've never, I, I broke into the building. You guys don't know this. I broke in, I broke in last uh, 4th of July at 3.30 in the morning. I broke in, I went to the bathroom, there's two guys sitting on the pot. July 4th, before you even knew that you were just before getting the Before I even knew I was going to get the gig, I picked a, I picked a federal holiday, and it was a, it fell on a Sunday. It was Sunday at 3.30 in the morning I broke in. There were three guys taking a dump in there. It is, grot- it, is, it is the busiest is it, public bathroom outside of an airport that you will ever come by. It, it is. It, it's a picture, uh, picture uh, OzFest with one porta potty. In, in yeah. the center of the arena. That's basically <laughs> how busy the ass work is on and this place. That's the point. I mean, it's a lot of foot traffic in there to begin with, but but the high percentage of number twos that are taken in that room, it's hard to imagine. It's nothing short of an attack. <laughs> and look, here's the thing. A lot of you guys are just arriving at work. Now, here, there are things to bring to work. A good attitude, maybe a little pound cake, not your duke. <laughs> yeah. Do that at home. Not full intestines, right? Yes, you just arrived at work. Your commute was all of 12 minutes. You can't sync up your clock so you can be on your own throne. What kind of filthy animal doesn't wish to stay at home <laughs> as long as it takes to purge oneself? <laughs> True? I, I don't know how cheap you would have to be not to want to do it at your own home. Use up a couple pieces of Charmin and a half gallon of water. Please, Ugh. everybody. I And as far as the memos go, you know, lots of stuff posted around about uh, keeping the refrigerator clean, washing your hands, showing respect. To me, this should be number one. Laminated placards everywhere. This is the message we need to get out. Forget about the goddamn blood drive. Let's work on the Duke drive. Please, <laughs> fellas, offload at home. Look, if you have to work in more brand, if you have to get up 20 minutes earlier, I'm not going to tell you how to do it. Just do it. So you, I don't have to walk into you taking a dump every single commercial break. <laughs> and let's be honest, everybody here, it's a, it's a radio show, so they're only four hours long. Half the work day, you know. Please. Take care of this at home. I'll take 20 hours or, to do your Or how about you tune into the show and take the Dukes when I'm doing the rants about you taking the Dukes. Don't uh. wait for the commercial breaks and then go scurrying into the bathroom with your pants around your ankles. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it goes. Hurry, hurry. He's heading toward the bathroom. <laughs> that, that I don't have sense. to go. Get on the pot, Earl. <laughs> Okay, everyone, please. And this is not just the people that work on this station. Have the dignity to take the dump at your own casa and then come into work. If you're sick, that's another story. <laughs> right. That or goes without saying. if you ordered Indian takeout and you're burning the midnight <laughs> oil, that's another thing. Look, if it's 8.30 in the evening I walk in there and you put in a 12-hour day and whatever, 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 nature calls, that's one thing. You just showed up. Your car's still making that weird cool-off ticking sound out in the garage, and your ass is on the toilet. If you can't hold it for the four hours, then go and see a physician. Right. There's something wrong with you. All right. Now, where were we? Oh, yeah. The more you know. Thank you. Danny Boatwright. <laughs> what? <laughs> Danny. What, what, what a nice lead in there. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me smooth it over for you. I agree with you, though. I agree with you. I know. I'm sure you don't have the difficulties we have in the Women ladies' room. Women don't have room. problems with this, do we? We don't, we don't do that. I know? imagine... So- Obviously, biologically, Danny's going to have to do something, but I imagine pink, <laughs> pink cubes coming out in pyramid shape. <laughs> That's right. A chocolate sundae. Yes. Yep, there you go. Danny, a chocolate sundae. It's, it's funny. I, uh, Danny Boatwright is confusing to me. It's just Danny from Survivor is uh, how I know you. I'm a huge <laughs> fan of not only the show, but as I've said many times, yours. Oh, thank you. Yeah. How I do have you... to correct you. I wasn't wrestling with girls on the, the net there. We were we were playing basketball. I know. To you, it was a sport. To me, it was just <laughs> hot chicks having <laughs> at it on a cargo net. And, by, by the way, Danny dominating. Feeding it into her. Her posting up on some chick who's been eating grubs for three weeks and just driving it home. <laughs> Scoring the game-winning hoop. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Hot well, last stuff. Night it, last night it didn't work out so well for me, though. I actually played, started a basketball league last night, and the girls that we played against, mm-hmm. I'm not sure they were girls because they, I think they were enjoying me posting up to them a little too much. Oh, really? You know yeah, wow. it, it was bad. It was More bad. fuel for my fire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm chubby or I'm a lesbian. Oh, please. Please, Fresca. <laughs> so, uh, Danny, what are you uh, going to be watching the Final Four this weekend? Yeah, actually, um, I you know doing sideline reporting for Arena Football, and I have a game on Saturday, so I'm gonna have to tape it. Hopefully, nobody will spoil it for me, so I can come back home and, and watch the uh, the uh, Final Four. Who do you like? Well, <laughs> besides my the Ace Man, is all 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 messed yeah. up, messed up. Um, I you know I really. I had UCLA in one of my brackets in our family pool. I had UCLA picks. So I have to go with them, but. I mean, George Mason, they're the giant slayer, so how can you count them out? I mean, everybody keeps picking them to lose, but they keep on fighting. And, mm-hmm. um, I, you know, I wouldn't be surprised. Anything can happen. That's Here, for sure. Here's one of the saddest ironies there is. People like sports, so they go into sports casting, and now Danny doesn't get to watch one of the biggest events in sports, the Final Four, because she has to go cover through the broadcast <laughs> of I arena know. football. Right. That's wrong, and it, it, you know, and college <laughs> basketball is my favorite, so this is the first time I'll have ever missed watching the Final Four. What? What's going on with you, uh, Danny? You dating? You married? What's happening? No, no, just uh, you know, busy traveling around. I'm so so darn independent. I do have a boyfriend, but we really get to see each other. So really, it's been been kind of tough on the road, but I would travel yeah. with you. Well, all right then. Whenever I'm, you, heading, I'm you know, heading to L.A. in a couple weeks. Oh, so. uh, <laughs> better yet, let the mountain come to Mohammed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but oh, I'm excited by it. God. You're coming out to L.A. Yep, going to be heading out there for a couple weeks. A couple yeah. weeks? A couple weeks. That's yeah. more time than I Sometimes need. I only need a few minutes. <laughs> oh, you yeah. so bad. Yeah. She can bad. crash at the ace man's home, right? Yeah, I got plenty of room for you. <laughs> the only problem is I'm coming out with my seven brothers. You know, my dad is the head of the SWAT team out here in Kansas City, Kansas. So. Wow. <laughs> Dad's the head of the SWAT team, and you have seven yeah. brothers. Yeah, pretty pretty well protected. <laughs> well, you're not traveling with... You're, are you really traveling with the brothers, though? No. no okay, good. You come out solo. Like That's right. <laughs> you just uh, show up wearing a smile. Wear those tight red shorts you wore in uh, oh, the Guatemala God. Survivor. Well, you know what? I'm sorry, but you know what? I've gained 30 pounds now since I've been back, so oh. I'm actually up to 125 pounds. <laughs> I'll work it right off you. Perfect. <laughs> I'm sure you would. All right, Danny. Seriously, come out and see us when you're in L.A. I definitely will. Definitely. Will. Hey, who are you guys picking for the national championship? Well, by the way, when I say us, I mean me and my genitalia. I, don't <laughs> I know. I'm not talking yeah, about the radio very, show. Very young. Yeah. Yes. I am. I'm, I'm going to UCLA. Why not? UCLA. We have to out there, right? Sure. Yeah. You know, the frustrating thing is they don't get any respect, the West Coast teams. It's all you hear all year long is, well, I guess Gonzaga, but Gonzaga right. and, and, and Duke, that's it. And it's always ACC Big East. And well, then all of a sudden you get LSU and UCLA and teams that people don't even know who plays I'm on. taking Kansas. Yeah, thanks. Nice. I just want to get that shot in there, didn't you? It's not a sh- no, 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 baby. I'm trying to curry favor with you for your visit out here. You're, you're taking that for next year, though, right? With those those deadly fresh whatever you want, we have. whatever you want. <laughs> so, uh, Danny, you come yes. in? Will you? Will you come in and uh, see us? Absolutely, I'd love to. Ooh, All right, uh, thank you, Danny uh, Boatwright. DannyBoatwright.com is uh, where you go to uh, find out all her picks and her blogs and all that uh, good stuff. Hopefully we'll get her in studio then when she gets out to L.A. We'll take a quick break, and then we have a surprise for you after this. This is Dana Gould, and you're listening to The Adam Carolla Show. All right, just a little bit of time left. Now, we spoke earlier about uh, Masawi, who was uh, the uh, 5th or 20th or whatever uh, hijacker. September 11th was supposed to... Fly a plane into the White House. Anyway, he's on trial. Their uh, jury's going to render a decision soon. He did more damage than good by uh, speaking on his own behalf, making weird threats and saying what he was going to do to America. Basically buried himself. Buried himself. We have more tape of uh, some of the inflammatory things he said. And like I said, if he didn't do enough damage the first time around, just listen to this. Richard Reed and I were to fly a plane into the White House on September 11th. I intended to go to Arlington Cemetery and light my farts with the eternal flame of John F. Kennedy's grave. (laughs) I wished to sit on the Lincoln Memorial in Ulysses' lap as a toilet while reading barely legal. (laughs) I was going to the Veterans Hospital, sneaked up behind shell-shocked World War II veterans and loudly shout, Incoming! (laughs) That would have been good. Well, then he continues. (laughs) I had planned to drive a busload of Boy Scouts off the edge of the Grand Canyon. I would build a time machine 
go back to the original signing of the Declaration of Independence and stab John Hancock with a quill pen. <laughs> oh, I'd man. better go to the St. Louis Arch, go to the gift store, and take several snow globes without paying for them. Wow. <laughs> It's like he wants to be put to death. It really us. is. He's asking to be mm. punished at this point. Any, is there any more statements? I was going to have a intercourse with the crack in the Liberty Bell. Wow. <laughs> I was going to dig up the remains of Paul Revere and his horse and reenact <laughs> famous scenes from the movie Hot to Trot. <laughs> What can I say? I love the Bobcat Colt Wade. <laughs> I was going to run up the steps of the Philadelphia courthouse like in your Rocky movie, but break wind with every step. <laughs> oh, no. That is a slap in the face of all Americans. All right, is there anything else? There's still more. I was more. planning to go to oh, Boston, no. hijack old Ironsides, and use it to commit various acts of high seas piracy. I was going to break into the National Archives, steal the original draft of the Constitution, and use it as rolling papers for a gigantic tube. <laughs> I wish to go to the Library of Congress, rip pages out of the John F. Kennedy's profiles in Courage, kidnap a file clerk, and give him paper cuts on his genitalia. Oh, that, I've, that, I, I've heard enough, unless there's more. Okay. Oh, I plan to take a crucifix and put it in a glass of urine. I would then take a photograph of it and make the government pay for it. What? You're kidding me. Maplethorpe. Wow. I was going to find Vice President Dick Cheney and pretend to be a bird. When he attempted to shoot me, I would move and shove a 78-year-old man in the way. <laughs> well, done and done. That one too? Okay. How about this? I would blow up the levees in New Orleans and then not bring aid to any of the poor. What? what? You've got to be <laughs> me. Wow. It turns out some of some of those things came to fruition, yeah. <laughs> yeah, all right. Well, that's what happens. He should have stopped at 28. Maybe we should have, too. Well, that's it. That's the end of the show. I want to thank Jim Gaffigan for coming out, Beyond the Pale, the name of his CD out now. Brett Michaels, Best of Poison, 20 Years of Rock, in stores as we speak. Beautiful Danny Boatwright, Survivor winner. DannyBoatwright.com. David Spade, Bench Warmers. Coming up April 7th, Republican Richard Martin. He's uh, going to be at Genghis Cohen this <laughs> Saturday at uh, 8 p.m. out here in Los Angeles. Cousin Sal, Ray, Bill Cott, Jeff Richards. Jeff Richards at the uh, Lounge at Palm Springs in Las Vegas this Saturday night. And of course, uh, Claudia DeFalco. Wonderful job, baby doll. Had fun. Thank you. Nice. Some woman. Some woman, a nice job. We'll take a quick break, and we'll be back in about 20 hours from now. Until now, until then, Sam Corolla saying, mahalo.